If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah. 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 The blubbity bar. The blubbity bar. Sending out good vibes. The blubbity bar. Good vibes. The bar. Good vibes. The blubbity bar. Good vibes. Good vibes. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. In the future, there's a lot less of us on this planet. Maybe 1% of 1% of 1%. Wow. So we don't survive. We survive, but barely. only as a fraction. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grime America Show. We are going to be chatting with Michael Beaver a little bit later about uh, some paranormal experiences, some paranormal stuff. Nice little chat. He's got a book with some great stuff in it, some secrets that uh, he's willing to take to the grave. Hopefully it won't come to that. Maybe we'll let you know a little bit of those secrets this episode. And, he's been uh, keeping all that on his website. The yeah. massive repository of links of all any sorts kind of, of crazy thing you repository want to Repository is a on. good word. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the link for the website has to be in the show notes. And of course you got everybody's, is that a hickey on your neck? <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. Of course, Graham Broken Ribs Dunlop oh. over here is taking a beating in the ball hockey world. He's having trouble getting around, but at least he wasn't crushed. I was crushed. That's what happened. I was crushed by a huge dude. <laughs> you know there's going to be ISOs <laughs> of that. Don't laugh. <laughs> That's from the needling that I got at Physio. She says it's going to bruise. Uh, look, then I look in the mirror. It's this big purple dot on my neck. Totally looks like a hickey. <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> So I go to physio and she says I'm okay because, I mean, I was in pain all weekend. Like my ribs, my back, my fr- chest, my shoulder, it was all hurting from this Huge massive dude. hit. <laughs> <laughs> Remind Sorry, me to tell you about the hip check too. Tell me about it. Tell us. So I, mean, I go to physio. love your hockey I go to, fucking I go to physio because instead of going to the doctor, they, they're pretty good. They started healing you up and they gave you exercise and all that. And So she's poking around and there's not a lot of direct pain, but there's something in my back that's like in the middle, right? And she says, it doesn't seem like your ribs are broken or anything like that. It's just probably muscle strain or whatever. She gives me some dry needling and she gives me some some exercises, right? And I get home and I'm trying to take a nap. And I, I, I hear this and I feel this crack and it's not like a, like a, uh, like your, like your fingers cracking. In the middle of my back, this crack. And now there's a direct pain, like this spot of intense pain in my back slash rib, I think. And now I can't breathe. I can't laugh. I can't cough or sneeze or whatever without it hurting. Dude, I went to the whole physio like saying, broken rib. <laughs> I know, but it's the physio. Everything was fine. Maybe she Until broke after your I rib. got home and I reached out to put my phone in the charger and it crack. Uh-huh. She didn't do anything to it, like anything bad. It was just. What, what is inside there that has to crack and release and then all of a sudden cause a bunch of pain? Like, it's just so weird. And the weird thing well, is before like that you game. you a broken rib. I mean, when you laugh, you're wincing. Well, now I am, but yeah. yesterday I was fine. So now you've got so how something's did I, fucking something swollen. Something tweaked after. Something or, swollen in there. It all swolled up. Like, I almost didn't even go to get it checked, though, because it was getting better yesterday. Now it's way worse. Huh. Anyways, the weird thing is before that game, I did all these like upper body mobility exercises to get the blood flowing and everything. And, if, and I was in the red light before that. Like what if, it, if like my theory is if I didn't do all that out of character stuff. Oh, the red the game, light came in? Yeah. Well, it's f- fantastic. I should get one. It's, it lights up the whole room. Could I just sleep with it on? I, I was wondering about that. We should ask him. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. It's bright though. It's bright. I'm going to email him, see if I, I'm going to get a light. Okay. Seems like good time. Yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, so my theory is that if well, I didn't do sure all that, you didn't, like tweak something when you were like doing all this stuff, you don't know. No, it's do. fine. These, no, it was when I got crushed. Stretches. I'm telling you, it was when you're I got twisting, crushed. And, you ripped some shit. It was a terrible notice. game. It was a freaky game. They were out to for blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Again, this is ball hockey. 
oh, the refs were even flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come to one of these ball hockey games. Oh. It's, it's unavoidable. So me and this guy hit each other as well. I am going to come hey, and live stream. Me and this guy, no, no, no. Games. Me and this guy hit each other. And then he tells me that I high stick them and he dove and he falls. And I don't know if it hit his chin on the floor. And he gets up and I could tell he was going to run at me. And he's running at me, going to take my head off with a cross check. Like right at, and I'm used to this. <laughs> I bet you are. The last second, submarine, like hip check, flips right over top of me, fucking lads, right in front of their bench. And this is oh. a ball, this is a ball hockey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that took me right back to the 80s when I used to have to hip check the big dudes. Because it always makes sense when you're on skates, people are moving fast. Oh, like. yeah, but no, he flipped like right over top, like right, landed on his ass right in front of his bench. So I gotta come and I live the stream refs, and I thought the refs would get me they with the, with the hip check. But we they got didn't. that. They just new, got me with a fake high stick. We got that new cam link adapter. No, we're not doing anything like that. Is there that. Wi-Fi there? No, there's, there's gotta no, be it's, Wi-Fi no, it's at the in arena. A big Faraday cage arena. There's nothing there for you. I'll bring the cell phone and and uh, hotspot it. Anyways, what a disaster! I'm telling you, I think we could sell this. We could do a pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> Grams hockey finals on members only, supporters only. I'm out now. I'm out for weeks now. <laughs> do, they, do they need me to go in your place? What? Yeah, you could. No, you can't. No, I don't. No? no. You don't think I could keep up? No. I'd be a letdown. <laughs> Is that what you're getting at here? <laughs> I'm pretty good when I get in front of the net. Oh, yeah. you're. Yeah. But I need skates. I mean, it, ball hockey just seems like. Don't even. I'm pretty sturdy on my head. skates. Yeah, I feel like my I have less of advantage in front of the net on my feet than I do on my skates. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. I'm good at digging in my skates, yeah. and pushing people around. Yeah. yeah, I'm a traditional Canadian hockey goon. Yeah, ish. Yeah, not a goon. You're like Tim Kerr in front of I'm, the net. You know, who's like, Tim Kerr? You don't even know who Tim Kerr. Is? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. I'm like an era behind you. <sighs> So is that like, uh, he's like a guy, like you're saying, he stands in front of the net and just whacks it in all the time. Yeah. Like just but can't get Screen, moved. Right. Get hit just, by a lot of shots. Yeah. Like <laughs> just that plug, like plugger, but you know, picks I'm up all to, the garbage, picks up all the garbage. I'm a garbage goal scorer read, for sure. We've got to read Theo Fleury's book. It's very Canadiana. I've read it. No, I mean on like oh. audio wise, like get that. That would be fun. Should I follow up with them? Well, maybe. Let's th wait maybe. till we have some more stuff yeah, out there yeah, okay. and then we'll follow okay. up. So, uh, good to hear hockey's going well. Still going for it. I'm telling you, we're going to live stream no, 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 the no, finals. No. I'm going to go to the playoffs. Nothing you're not. And live stream some games. I'm never going to tell you supporters. when the games are. I'll just follow you. Schedule and, I'll follow you. I no. can figure this out <laughs> so easily. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I might not play. I'm done for the season. <laughs> we'll get some live stream ground. I think it'd be super. We won't live stream it. I'll just record it and I'll re release it on the YouTube channel for supporters. Only. I've never had a YouTube. I've never had a chest injury, like a rib injury. Or it would be neat to like live nothing. stream it though. Like it's always you guys been blow like, up. It's like all these Chinese people are stuck in their house. I don't even want to talk about it on the show. I don't want the guys from the team might even be listening to this. And then what? Thinking I don't you're know. a wuss? <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's not good. It's bad. What's not good? There's no f anonymity anymore. Oh, you worried the guys in the show are going to hear about you talking about your hockey injury on the show? Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't they be happy with that? I don't know. So someone sent in a picture of a dead fish to the text line, and I'm not quite sure how to take it. What do you think? Uh, it's there's a couple <laughs> dead fish in there. I think it's just because you don't see dead fish very often. Really? I don't reply with the thanks question mark. Yeah. Uh, so then we got this other one here. Uh, so what are you in the chats then? Anubis in the chats. We got oh, a bunch of new people in the chats from sorry. episode 400. Thank you very much. For everybody. I fucking fell asleep and I forgot to call in. It's the weed. When are you doing another show? <laughs> That's the person who called in an hour early. Oh, yeah. And right. then they passed out in the next hour. Yeah. They didn't quite make it. Uh, I just wanted to get to the phone right away because I think we have a, uh, Call we didn't get to last time from our friend Mello. Okay. He's coming to CAC. So you're on the phone getting the voicemails then from the call-in line, which is uh, 
403. Oh, geez, the chair's in front of it. I have to go. <clears throat> I can find it pretty quick here. 403 702. I should 6083. Check it? unheard messages. Press 1 1. Name. We'll do it after. First unheard message. What up, Darren and Graham? This is Mellow Horace from the chats. Uh, I can't make the live call in because uh, I'm going to go see Tool tonight. Super excited about that. It's been like my favorite band since I was like three. Um, anyways, just wanted to call and say congratulations on 400 episodes. That is amazing. I found the show about a year ago. And I uh, joined the chats a couple months after that. And uh, just wanted to call and thank you guys for all that you do. Um, and uh, much love. And I wish I could say more, but I am fixing to get ready to go to this show. And, uh, yeah, much love and have a great night. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys at CAC. It's going to be fantastic. Peace, y'all. Enjoy the pregame. End of message. <clears throat> so that number for our voicemail. Message and, erased. And texting. Is, Next message. Oh. I have a feeling that's a troll. So I think it's people that were calling and getting the voicemail. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. During the call-in show. I hope there's not going to be a whole whack of these that you're going to have to go through. Message erased. Next message. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Doesn't she tell you how many messages there are at the beginning? End of message. She said to seven. It. Oh, really? Oh, no, you don't want to go through this whole Message seven. erased. You no, because it's all from Next the message. It's all people hanging up from you the show. That. That you, you, how can you just make this generalization? Message this erased. is the problem. Next message. <laughs> you, End of you message. You could be right. Yeah. But you can't just generalize. Message like erased. That. What if it's another I just thought maybe you could do it on your own without being on the show. End of message. Yeah, there you go. To erase. That's it. Well, then That's you got to save them. Message erased. Well, that's okay. Skipping. Just Next press message. nine instead of seven no. or whatever. No. Not doing hey, Zach, it. I appreciate your uh, insight. Um, I'm in Slida, Louisiana. Um, where are you going to watch the Super Bowl? Just, uh, my name's Shirley, and uh, 352 oh. five, five, <laughs> <don't. laughs> Jesus Christ, Charlie. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, support your work. Oh. I, uh, I understand what's going on. Uh, I'd love to hang with you for a little bit, buddy. Give me a call if you're uh, available. Thanks. I think that was the wrong number. End of message. To erase this mess- <laughs> you think message. You so? I don't think so. Oh. End of unheard messages. Main menu. Well, you know what? I support what's going on with your buddy. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Do you think it was the wrong number? Yeah, I think so. He didn't we don't watch the Super Bowl around here. Did you watch it? No. no. I don't even know who was in it or who won. Nah, either did I. You That's know what's good. funny is I was at the store. Well, I, I do know Kansas City I was at the and grocery store. I heard no agenda run it down, but. I was at the grocery store, and I was like, man, it's quiet in here today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Buddy's like, yeah, it's probably because of the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, is it the Super Bowl? And he's like, yeah, I don't care either. <laughs> I was like, good for you. So the number, 403-702-6083. Call in, leave a text. Yeah, call yeah. in. And thanks for everybody now, calling in for the 400 call-in show. It was great. Maybe you call in on a random Wednesday when we're recording an intro and you, oh, and you get in. There you go. You probably don't, though, because if we're doing an interview, we're not going to answer. Yeah. But, anyway. but that was a fun show. Yeah, thank everybody for participating and the feedback, and it was good. It was good. Yeah. That was a fun show. That was a fun. I felt a little weird afterwards, to be honest, because I did. We didn't do it to, to 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 like to solicit feedback from people, but it turned into a little bit of that, which was great to hear from everybody. But really, want to hear from people on what they're. I kind of expected what they're, it. What they're, it what they're, it's because we don't do it enough. Yeah. When you only do it few and far between, everyone's dying yeah. to say that. Yeah. So that you have to give people a chance to get that off the chest. Yeah. And then to be doing enough so that you can actually start doing like, you know, like how Joe Roop does it. Yeah. Where he gets people that are just actually calling in about Certain the topic things, at yeah. hand yeah. or yeah. whatever. Like, cause then yeah. you could say it. So we're doing a trip report show, but it's real. They get to call in and say their own trip reports and shit. Yeah. I don't know. I've been trying That's to think of idea. different ways I mean, we could start like adding that. more content. Yeah. Topics like that would be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll get you doing a vlog. 
No. Every morning. No, no. No, no. no. <laughs> Tell us about what happened in ball hockey the night before. How about after hockey block? The fucking refs, I'd rather man. <laughs> describe our D&D game than ball hockey. Really? Yeah. Does D and D get the same passion ball hockey is like? Are you gonna see you coming dragging your ass in here because you got hurt playing D and D one day? Well, I almost died. My vampire almost died. The the team had to save me. Literally, and I was gaseous. Turned into gaseous form by a big ancient dragon. They had to take me to my coffin to regenerate. Are you guys still all vampires? Yeah. So you guys just been spent the last like <laughs> six months wandering around the earth as vampires? It's been like a year and a half, probably. I think. <laughs> You don't think to start like a new game or no, because you level up, we're now we're more powerful, but we still can't really win but the big battles. Guys, like, it's just you guys, it's each it, other. we're in a whole world of Who are you battling <clears throat> the people that are trying to take over the world, like the necromancer and the evil demons and dragons. Like, it's it's intense, are, like, we can't <laughs> win a battle either. We're, we're not very good you, teamwork, aren't like, you just battling yourself? Are you battling the dice? The, no, we're battling the dungeon master who runs the the the, the whole world, right? And all the monsters and all that. And then you use dice to help you along with all the stats and the, the uh, <clears throat> you know, the rule set that the, is part of the game. You guys should be writing a book out of it. Justin does a fantastic job at recaps. Really? Oh, it's it's unbelievable. Why? He, he does. He spends so much time on these recaps. And I'm thinking we got to do something with the recaps. Even though. you guys should have a little Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> Patreon going. People can get your recaps. In a minute, if they become a certain level patron, they're allowed to play once in a while. I'll give you. A, I remember the time I ordered those dice and shit. I was going to come in and kill one of you. I'll give you an idea. I even collu I colluded with I with I Nomad. What happened? To that. I listen, did, listen, 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 at the end. Listen, I was like, listen, I can't do listen. it. This is pretty good. You sure none of this listen, is listen. fucking copyright or anything, right? He's not using like music that's going to get us in trouble. No. When last we left our fanged adventurers, they had finally laid eyes on the mighty green worm, the Halting. However, the dragon was not returned the benefit of vision of the vamps due to a spell cast by the sorcerer. The halting may do with the aid of a troglodyte shaman and was able to catch the adventurers off guard. After breaking the spell that concealed the hexblade in the sorcerer, the gargantuan dragon flew away, making arcane gestures as it did. Believing the worm gone and with other foes engaging the party, the two spellcasters rejoin the group in a nice, tight formation. The ancient green dragon collides with the wall of ice directly above part of the vamps, and the one the rogue was perched upon, apparently not looking out for dive-bombing dragons. Well, which way do they go, George? Which way do they go? The giant form crushing those unfortunate enough to be in the area. Pity them beneath. As the warrior and assassin battle the remaining elemental, the pinned vamps begin to escape from under All the right, that's enough for that. The mage goes it's... gaseous and frees himself, as do the dark cleric, the rogue, and the hexblade. The sorcerer dimension doors out of the range of the beast and attempts to disintegrate the elemental. The spell hits hard, but does not fall the creature. So that, that, was, is our, well that was our big battle against the dragon. How much time Justin committing to this shit? I know it's pretty We need to get Justin working right? for us. We need Greg Merrick. He is. How about a Greg Merrick recap? He is. He's working. It's fantastic. I want to like that recap of the last <laughs> episode with that little. Dun, 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 dun. Anyways, I mean that initial thing, we almost all died like instantly. We were pretty bad. We we didn't. But play no man well. could just be having a bad day and decide to kill you. all <clears throat> No, no, no. It's all part of the game. It's like it's part of the. But he you runs would tell the game. no, but you would tell that. What if he's you like, tell that, and a boulder falls off and crushes them all? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. No, no. Then you guys would mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the thing is, good. more people want to hear about this shit than I thought. Clearly, because at all of the events so far, these weird games are a big hit. Whether it's D and D or Magic. The Conqueror. The Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Whatever it is. More of our audience is into this stuff than I give give uh, credit. So yeah. 
I gotta allow some more room for this. Yeah, well, you should have you should have nope. you know trolled nope. us that one day when when Nomad gave the opportunity to come in and you guys be the big bad the guy. D and D server. <clears throat> that wasn't you. That wasn't your fault. Somebody spammed. You can't go in and spam everything and then expect to just be. Well, I was alone. spamming too. I know, but that's not the way to enter a D and D server by oh, just is sp- <laughs> laying spam everywhere. I mean, How do you enter like, a D and D server? Just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a respectfully? Is there a ceremony? <laughs> uh, okay, I can't find this fucking app again. It is my kids downloaded so many games on this All right. scene. All right, okay, where so, are we at? Uh, this I this, this intro is, is this is just back. usually an intro where we read listener emails and we have some quotes and some segments, but it's kind of off the rails now. But you can fast forward to the inter- to the show if you want. There should be a timestamp there. They hung out for this last 20 minutes. I think they're in for the long haul. Of course, the day, uh, the, the time I can't laugh because it hurts is the, is the time, time I'm it's the funniest. Funny, yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you got? Oh, man. Well, I don't know. I mean, you said you okay. had an email okay. you wanted to read. Okay, I, I do have an email I want to read. It's from an old friend of the show. Actually, it's from the guy who gave an us a one star. Old friend of the show? Like he's not a friend he of the show. He gave us a one Mars star. Man? Mars Man's yeah, back? Yeah, he's back. Mars needs a jingle. He does need a jingle. <laughs> Here, actually, I got one. I think I have the Marsman jingle here. Where is it? It's it's very hard not to totally argue with him. I got to say, we've had some back and forth on the email. He gave us a one star, and then when we interacted with him, he changed it to a five star, but then he might have changed it back to a one star. And I think he changed know. it back to a one yeah. star. I can't yeah. find the, uh, where is it? Maybe it's on board two. <laughs> no. But it's interesting, because I don't think he's listening. Listen to the latest, but we I did point him to the direction of the black budget feed where we talked with Dave Matheson about the libertarianism and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he'd appreciate that episode. I think we were rubbing off on him a little, a little bit. Uh, I don't want to rub off on Libertarian Mars, and uh, sort of the right leaning. Someone added us to the Twitter, Twitter group right wingers the other day. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy, eh? Yeah. So apparently my Twitter stance comes off as right wing. Yeah, and you weird. don't even use the Twitter. Only I do. Uh, there you go. Yeah. But that's because you're calling me all right too many times. My Twitter is far. This, there's no way this guy listens to the show. <clears throat> He's doing it by our Twitter content. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 this I'm is the furthest fucking This is unbelievable. Right I know. Actually, I know. maybe I'm a little right wing. Actually, I was socialist I'm for both a while. Or I liked it. I liked it. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm from Vancouver, you know, I was like, uh You're a socialist hippie? Yeah. For a while. Here's the Marsman jingle. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Oh, what did he say? So, <clears throat> so he says, uh, my old iCloud emails aren't coming over my new computer. That's why I was using my phone. I don't know what that means, actually. But anyways, this is a bit of a lengthy email, but it's interesting for many different reasons. All this was probably good for me. I was spending too much time listening to conspiracy and alternative podcasts, and it was cutting into things ultimately more important to me, I now realize. The genesis is that when I was exiting mind and body from my corner from my former church belief system, I came across a podcast out there. <clears throat> You're probably familiar with it. That was the first time I'd heard of MK Ultra, John D, Cointel Pro, the details of the MLK killing, and all kinds of things. My main interest was and is things related to consciousness, divinity, awareness, and such, but you can't look into that without running up against conspiracy ideas. So when I ran out of episodes, I looked in the Apple Podcast app for things like it. This is how I came across Grey America, along with the Higher Side Chats and other podcasts to listen to. It was fun, and I learned some interesting stuff. Some things really started getting to me, though. When did he send me? <clears> a <throat> couple days ago. Oh. So he's still out it, there, lurking in the shadows. Well, I hey, I got an email from him just to go back. Uh, this is on New Year's. He says, hey, happy New Year, no hard feelings. Funny enough, I was... Oh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> This is his clearing out an old email and saw this. How's it going? No hard feelings and slightly early happy new year. Be well. That was his to us or to me. So that's great. Cause I wasn't going to, I kind of refused to go back and forth with the nonsense before that. I was like, no, I'm not going to 
go into that. I mean, maybe we get into that email one day if you want. But sure. I mean, I I, I can't believe you go far down the rabbit hole with this people. I just <laughs> fucking block people. No, 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 no. There's no reason to block. I mean, it, it's it, yeah. it's interesting. <clears throat> Sometimes there is. So, one was the way interview shows would have guests that come in and say, in effect, Einstein, Heisenberg, Bohr, and Planck, Darwin. In fact, the list of geniuses of science are all wrong, and I have figured this stuff out. <clears throat> they were all wrong, and we need to go back to either physics or flat earth or dump the whole mess and start all over, and anyone who actually has credentials in a subject is the product of the system and can't be trusted. The other was the very clear right-wing bias from a lot of corners of the conspiracy pop culture. Conspiracy culture owes, owes a whole lot of its DNA to what was once considered far-right whackdom, like the John Birch <coughs> Society. <clears throat> While you guys may have lightened up about it, I did listen to the Black Budget show on libertarianism, and your guest was spot on, but I think it's been a while since I tuned in, so I don't know how you feel now. But in general, libertarianism and market fundamentalism have seen to me, based on the people I've heard, to be integral to the genre. Then came Trump, Pizzagate, QAnon, how many times did I hear people on your show and others get into that or somehow embrace the idea that this guy is going to take on the deep state and drain the swamp and arrest the pedophiles, etc. ad nauseum, off the rails and over the shark we went. What is really disturbing, and I desperately wish I would engage... Isn't it <clears throat> jump the shark? <laughs> <laughs> That's typical of you. <laughs> over the shark. Yeah, jump the shark. Jump over it. What is really disturbing and I desperately wish would change is the constant focus on possible conspiracies, even like likely ones like chem. Oh, I, I missed that part before. Even likely ones like chemtrails while right out on our faces, conspiracies are completely ignored. Why is the Powell memo rarely, if ever mentioned the overly overtly stated conspiracy to undercut the liberal media and liberal academia in the public mind and create alternatives that favor business, business friendly pro market policies. Hmm. Fox news, Breitbart Infowars, and to a varying less and ex lesser extent, much of the so-called alternative media pro libertarian pro market and government regulation. How about, okay. So there, I mean, there's a lot here. This could, we could almost do a, a whole show talking about these, these points. But I, I do have a reason reading it tonight and, and getting into my my new segment. Another new segment? No, no, it's the old new segment. Project Operation? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I debunked it. <laughs> so, so do you want to touch on any of that or should I just keep reading it? No, on? just keep because There's no point. Well, there is a point. No, there's not. There is. A, okay. We could argue about whether or not there's a point. Well, because it leads to things like, you know, it leads to us sharing our opinions on political things. That no, may or may no, 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 okay, no. We don't have to get political. It's a, it could be a free speech thing. Like, we're going to be regular. Did you hear the news in, in the CBC and all this in, mm -hmm. in Canada? They want to start licensing any kind of media I, and podcasting. I, I, I mean, Curry and told him we need a podcast license ASAP. <clears throat> yeah. This is, this, is, this is how bad it's going to get. Luckily, we and got that And that fits in with John's... Options in Texas. That, that fits in with John's sort of... I think his issue with us in the past and the alternative media and podcasts in general, the, the oh, writer of this email. Yeah. Because I feel like he, he thinks that we should be somehow not legislated necessarily, but, but responsible to not spread fake news or something like that. And that's a really, really bad summary of it, but he, but I think no one he, else has that responsibility. That's the thing. <laughs> even the real news corporations, it's flipped over. It's flipped upside or down. Or even the science organizations that are bought and paid for by corporations. Exactly. Or... Exactly. So that's my point. So we don't, so I think he's torn between like learning about things that are real, conspiracies are real, likely even like chemtrails, he says. But he doesn't seem to acknowledge why this has come up, why there's an interest in these alternative shows and topics on us, because the mainstream is the, and the science and the mainstream has done such a terrible job at, at dealing with the truth what and actually you, maybe far worse still propagating to lies. Be political. <clears throat> Why aren't you covering the left wing conspiracies? Like, I don't know. Cause I don't give a fuck. 
this is okay. This is where it's going to end up. This is what I'm getting at. This okay. Now I'm going to read on now. Okay. This because this is interesting. It's kind of <laughs> what was in my head in a way. What? Because I don't care about yeah. people pushing their religion as much as like pushing back with religion as opposed to pushing censorship laws across the world and licensing for podcasting and stuff like that. Like to me, that's a little bit more important than somebody trying to maintain Christendom in the, in the United States. So let me sure. move on. Let me move on. Okay. How about Christian domin dominionism? The very overt and clearly stated intent to create a Christian version of Sharia laws in the USA. Are you familiar with project blitz? So he sends a link. As of December 2018, 25 bills passed on the recommendations of the project were introduced out of over 70 being considered. They passed in five states, including Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Louisiana, and Tennessee. These sorts of bills included, now I didn't, he's quoted something from, I don't remember reading this in Wikipedia, but. So isn't that, doesn't that, doesn't, isn't his real enemy democracy? Which is an okay enemy to have. I'm not saying that, you know, democracy is the greatest thing in the world. Because I'm not sure that it is. Right. But that his enemy would seem to be democracy if these things are being voted in. I mean, if, because, I mean, from my point of view, none of that shit matters because your votes don't matter. Right. But if he's in a world where the votes still matter and things are being voted in, then that's what the majority went for. So that's where things get greasy. It's like, so if you, that's where it's like, maybe you just need to move away from places where the votes aren't going your way. I don't know. Instead of yeah. trying to change other people's fucking minds to agree with you. Yeah, yeah. What right does, do I have to do that? Or do you have to do that? Or does he have to do that? Okay, let me continue on then. That's a good point. These sorts of bills included measures that would, for example, allow adoption and foster care agencies to refuse services based on religious beliefs and mandate public schools to display in God we trust signage. Also popular were bills encouraging schools to teach the Bible and encouraging students and teachers to express religious beliefs in school, both of which can lead to proselytism or denigration of non-Christian faiths. But I don't want to pick a fight with these people. <clears throat> legislation no drafted reason. legislation drafted <laughs> by Project Blitz to allow Bible classes in public schools was enacted in Kentucky in 2017. And at least 10 slate, 10 state legislatures introduced versions of the same Project Blitz in 2019. As of October 2019, CPFCF leadership had claimed a network of 950 state legislatures in 38 states. So this describes the planned process of introducing legislation at the state and federal level that progressively moves the bar ever towards a return to Christian exceptionalism and primacy over other beliefs, especially non-belief. Let's go back and get the women, homos, trannies, ragheads, and godless atheists back in the kitchens, closets, and jails that were their places just a generation ago. Within my lifetime, it was illegal for a married couple to purchase and use contraceptives. It is illegal for a married couple to purchase a vibrator in the state of Alabama today. All supposedly in the name of religious liberty. Magic words. Might as well say abracadabra. Edward Bernays would be so proud. There's a good example of a conspiracy right out there in the open with a publicly stated goal of mind control Every bit as much about mind control as any advertising campaign ever paid for. Where is that on the radar of the alternative media? The greatest mind control manufacturer of consent ever? Convincing the Western working class that neoliberal socioeconomic policies were in their best interest and that it is better to give tax breaks to multinational corporations than provide even a minimum of guaranteed health care to all citizens. That increasing levels of poisons in our shared environment and rolling back progress that was made 40 years ago are a good thing. That bailing out the banks and greed mongers that ruined millions of futures were better than changing the regulatory lapses that allowed them to do so. There's no need for a legislative control of capitalism. The market is the best way to go. And it has worked. Ask any habitual Fox News viewer. That is the legacy of the Powell Memo conspiracy. A, neo, a new neoliberal feudalism with the kings and barons 
replaced by plutocrats and the peasants dominated by a pro-authoritarian Iron Age divinity. It's really well written. I like Sounds it. Sounds more the like interesting, fascism. I mean, the this interesting guy thing, a podcast. The interesting thing about this conspiracy is that it's right out there for all to see. Proudly. You should start a show. Because I don't think that there is any bias. At least amongst the shows I, that I know, I don't think any of them are actively chasing down a bias. They're just... What shows? Like alternative media? Yeah, the shows we're friends with. Yeah. I mean, I'm not thinking about that stuff when I book people. I'm thinking about what I want to talk about next. Yeah. And religious shit in schools isn't fucking very high on my list, unfortunately. No, because you could also argue that that's a huge pushback from the the non-believers and the atheism and the materialistic well, crowd, which I don't is want to pushing, get into because which is, well, because we, he's we, obviously coming from a state where he thinks these people are all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because science has told him so. Well, I'm not 100% sure that's right I, in well, either look direction. At, look, materialism is not, is not winning the fight either. So it might not be religious and it's not materialism, but there's a thing in the middle, like this sort of spiritual aspect, the non uh, neither, no, non They're both fucked. I mean, both of them both, are- No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Both of them are like so, hijacked and railroaded and- But I don't think it's fair to say that all of a sudden- Can this, something be this, hijacked and railroaded? Uh, hijacked then railroaded? Sure. All right. That's good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to say that this religious pushback is going to go back 40 years to, you know, being being um, critical of LGBT and all this, all this stuff that's happening. It's probably more like clutching at straws of a dying religion. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, isn't it easy to see that, that pushback? After what's know. happened, censoring people, their censorship problems and the. You I don't know, want anybody censoring the, anything. You know, the meat puppet materialists are running the show really right now. And there's got to be some pushback. Yeah. So. And the, the other well, point, maybe that's and the other it point is, 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 is that, that I mean, I also don't agree with, the the, you know, I don't agree with all of a sudden saying that, oh, now poisons are allowed to be running the water just because you're trying to roll back regulations that don't work doesn't mean you're just allowing the environment to get wrecked. I mean, that's a whole other, other topic in there. That's why you just got to stay away from that tribal mess. So that leads me to project blitz project, uh, operation. It's, a, it's the new, yeah, it's part of the new segment and he just laid it right out there for me. So project blitz. So this is the Wikipedia part. So of course you can't believe everything you read in Wikipedia. We know that, uh, it's a pretty good resource, but it's also, is it a good resource? <laughs> yeah, for this segment it is. I got. I always be careful. The book of knowledge. We've had enough guests on that have had their Wikipedia's completely ravaged, and I always think of that. A bunch of right wing guests. <laughs> <laughs> Project Blitz, founded by Randy Forbes, is a coalition of Christian right groups, including the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation. That would be that CPCF that he referenced in the email. Also founded by Forbes, the National Legal Foundation, and the Wall Builders Pro Family Legislators Conference. So it is weird as well because this isn't like a, it's not like a, you know, the most of the projects and operations on our list are kind of military or deep state, or this seems like it's uh, Randy Forbes to give more context is a American politician, a member of the Republican Party. He was a U.S. representative for Virginia's fourth congressional district serving from 2001 to 2017. So definitely career politicians. Yeah, you know, none of involved. these fucking career politicians should exist. <clears throat> none of them. It seeks to protect the free exercise of traditional Judeo-Christian religious values and beliefs in the public square and to reclaim the property and no, to reclaim and properly define the narrative which so supports such beliefs. The group specifically encourages lawmakers to enact legislation that eliminates paths for legal interference of Christian practice in the public square. Supports conservative legislations at the local, state, and federal level with public relations and messaging, and otherwise seeks to alter long-standing narratives of religious liberty issues. Its agenda includes the promotion of the Bible in public schools and religious exemptions to LGBTQ civil rights protections and women's reproductive health care. The project's steering committee includes David Barton, and he's an ev evangelical Christian political activist and author. 
Buddy Pilgrim, <laughs> founder of Integral Leadership, Integrity Leadership, Bill Dallas, founder of, it, it sounds like a cast of characters, yeah. founder of the United in Purpose, and Leah Carawan, co-founder and executive director of the CPCF. So I don't know. I won't read a lot in there, but there's some criticism, influence, and model legislation and stuff like that. But Sounds like a bunch of shell companies. <laughs> But I don't see his quoted things in here anywhere. Um, so there, there's Project Blitz. Huh. There bringing, you have it. Bringing Christian uh, dogma to the public square again. Public square or public oh, yeah. school? No, public square. I mean, this is their... Well, I thought anything saying, goes in the public square. Well, this is, the, this is what I'm saying, right? But obviously There's they, a huge difference between the public square and the public school. It's both. It says... the. Per, to protect the free exercise of traditional. So this is to protect the exercise of traditional Judeo Christian religious values and beliefs in the public square, free speech, right? Yes. Freedom of religion. That's fine. But okay. public school is a different fucking story. Exactly. That shit's fucking brainwashing. And its agenda includes the promotion of the Bible in public schools. So, and then it gets into the re exemptions of LGBTQ, QAAP. And women's reproductive health care. So obviously, it's trying to. They always got to saddle battle. some shit on there, too. But yeah, well, anyways, I don't agree with that either. It's all fucking fascism. Anyways, we appreciate the email. Lots to talk about in there. Probably didn't do it justice, but would love to chat with you at some point. He was going to come on the show at some point. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting comments and very well written. Very well written. Marsman definitely has a way with writing. And maybe we'll get into our, our thread a little bit uh, at some point. All right. So support the show. America.ca slash support. So we can keep going on with these lazy ramblings. We do have the Texas recap to do. We'll save that for next week. There's going to be a bonus app coming out this week. Hopefully. Well, not, well, it's not booked yet, but we're trying. No, I got a, the bonus app from Texas still to release. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe I'll release that tonight. Well, no, now that we've done this intro, let's do this episode and then put that out maybe, no? What's the difference? Just timing-wise, because then this sits for longer and no, the that, timing just, is off. This would still go out Friday. Oh, okay. It's only sure. Tuesday. Okay, maybe. okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, support the show. You just got a bonus app. See yeah. that? We just worked that out. We and just we're had a staff more meeting. Too. We do, we're we're, we're working on, recording on Saturday, content. too. Saturday we're too, getting yeah. you guys extra content because support's down. We don't want to bitch and complain about it because we love the people that do support us, so we're just going to throw some more value out there. And if you find some value in the added value that we throw your way in the next couple months, maybe that can uh, get your off your ass to go sign up for a monthly or America.ca slash support. It'd be fantastic. Uh, bonus up with the Snake Bros. Hope you enjoyed it. It's already come out by now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, support the show. What else? There's uh, The CACs are sold out. Keep your eye on the newsletter and stuff like that for future events. Uh, I thought there was something else, but now I can't think of it. I mean, there'll be some audiobook news and stuff coming up, but we'll get to all that later. Um, we don't have anything to announce just yet. So sign up for the newsletter. That's probably the best way to keep your ear every week on the new projects and the things and how they're moving along. Grandmarker.ca uh, slash news. I think that still works. I don't know. Yeah, email Graham. Graham at just go to Grandmarker.ca. Everything or everything's in the show notes, too. There's a bunch of links on top. Click this, click that. You can join the Discord from there. Welcome to all the new people in the chats. Yep. Good to see all the new people in the chats. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. It's weird to hear the voicemail of of Mellow Horus, I think. Yeah. Which the whole shit show started. No, because I've seen, you know, you see these people in the chats and you hear their voice and it's very cool to to hear the voice of the words from the chats. Our sword intro went 45 minutes. I'm going to go meet Jason for dinner. Enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the chat with Michael Beaver.
All right, tonight we've got Mike Beaver with us. He's a hypnotherapist. He's also, he's got quite the background. He's a stuntman, martial artist. He's into UFOs. He's a contactee and author. Actually, I read the first 50 pages of his book, Instruments of Control, How Attaching Spirits Cause War, Terrorism, Crime, Racism, Murder, Insanity, mel- Mental Illness, and on and on and on. Um, and are leading humanity to its fourth impending fall. So I got to say, it was a good book, Mike. Looking forward to talking to you about all these topics. Well, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you for inviting me on the show. Yeah. Uh, you haven't read the best part of my book yet. I'm just getting warm up in the first three chapters. <laughs> Is that the chapter that you're talking to us about before we started recording? That uh, that that's where the, mean the that's the okay so the core the, of this book here. No, not really. Okay, so the chapter I was talking to you about is a uh, a dialogue between me and one of my clients. She's a was a breeder. For, she is a breeder for one of the gray races. Uh, she came to me for back pain and obesity, and she um, has a very high psi talent. That's why they chose her. She could get out of her body before she was born. When her parents were, um, after she was conceived and she was in the womb, um, her parents would be sleeping at night, and she would be hovering just above their pillows, right in the middle looking at them out of her body so she could get out of her body even before she was born. And she kept that talent and still has it today. And so when she would get abducted, okay, so let me back back this up a little bit. Uh, she worked with another famous, um, or should I say very famous abductee researcher. And when she was through with him, she knew about 24 of her encounters. After she worked with me, she knew about 72 of her encounters. And so uh, she came to me for back pain and obesity. So we worked. She released over 3,800 events uh, having to do with abusive experiences with her parents in the very first session. Now, I, I was told by my teacher, first teacher, that that was kind of like impossible you you can only release so many things in a given session because if you release too much, you become unbalanced and unstable and you'd like go nuts. So I was kind of schooled with the notion that you're kind of limited with how much you can release in each session. So when I, in the second session, I was very skeptical about what happened in the first session. So the very first thing I did when I started talking to her subconscious was I said, did you actually release those 3,800 plus events in the first session. And it said, yes. And she's talking with the pointing finger being the yes finger and then pinky finger being in the no finger so that I don't have to speak to her voice and mm-hmm. her, subcon- her conscious mind doesn't come up and get in her in the way. So I'm talking to her fingers, not her voice, right? And so um, after that, then uh, the next thing I did was I said, are there any other uh, experiences that have to do with why you came to me, back pain and obesity? And uh, she said, yes, or subconscious mind said, yes. And I said, well, how many? And I went up through the numbers and it, it turned out to be 72. And so I told her subconscious to give the conscious mind all this information. And we didn't really get into the information until after I brought her out of trance. So I brought her out after it was all done. And um, I asked her, what are these 72 events? And she said, well, they were uh, um, encounters with the greys. And it was uh, 24 implantations, 24 checkups, 24 removals, 48 abductions. The checkups were not abductions. They just came in to see if the, the fetus was okay. And halfway through the, they just stayed for about 10 weeks. So they'll implant you, and 10 weeks later, they'll remove it. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, so uh, well, I got a question on the releasing. Like, if for people that aren't sure, so you're hypnotizing her, and then she's releasing as in what? Like psychological blockages or, or trauma from 3,800 events when she was young? Uh, something like that. Yeah. What, what's hap- That's what you what's mean by happening release? Is, what's happening is, is you're talking... There's there's three major pieces of you as a human. There's actually a lot more than three, but for simplification, there's this conscious mind, the subconscious mind and the higher self. Now the subconscious mind and your body are equivalent to each other. 
but your subconscious is actually much bigger than your body, but your body and your subconscious while you're in this body are equivalent to each other. So if you have something that's, that's uh, buried in your subconscious, there's also an energy blockage in your body as well that goes with that. And, and when you release it, a lot of times it'll come up through your body and out the top of your head. So um, anyway, the higher self, my teacher never told me about the higher self. So I discovered that in my own practice. And sometimes when the subconscious is overly, um, uh, your subconscious is your, is like your mother on steroids. It protects you from anything. Now I could regress you to uh, a past life where say you were eaten by a shark, right? Yeah. And this happened to a lady. I, I regressed her to this moment where she died in a past life. And what she saw was the shark like an inch from her face. And, uh, and, and it ended instantly. It did not, she did not go through that experience because had she gone through it, it would have been terrible for her because when you relive your uh, past life experiences, you experience all of it. That includes the pain. So we would not want the pain of her getting eaten by a shark to come into her body. It was, she, she might've gone in shock. So her subconscious mind cut that event right. like instantly. To and protect it, her. It, it, yeah, it's your ultimate protector. But it can also be overly protective. It can uh, be skeptical of the of the hypnotherapist and say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to cooperate. I don't know if you're going to help me. I don't know if you're going to hurt me. I'm not I'm not going to do squat. It can do that. It can say, I'm not I'm not cooperating. In that case, you need to get in touch with the higher self. Then you talk to the higher self and say, is this for the highest good of the individual? The higher self says, yes. I said, you say, please talk to the subconscious and get it to cooperate. And it, the higher self will talk to the subconscious. And then from there, you shouldn't have any problems. So, so, so did she heal? Like, was there anything that was healed from that encounter with a shark in her past life? Like, did she have a fear of swimming or sharks or something like that? I but, honestly don't remember that lady. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember anything about that lady. That, uh, I've had so many clients that I, you know, I can't keep them all straight. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I couldn't tell you about the one lady. I've, I had the, the ones that are really successful or the ones that are total flop failures. I remember a lot of those. Um, I had a, a client who had an attaching spirit. Um, he um, basically what he did was he, he was like a witch. He liked to manifest changes in this world and he would go after anything that would help him manifest changes. Right. So he have heard about this one book and he went and read this book and he wouldn't tell me the name of it, but he said that any, every person who's ever read this book has committed suicide, committed suicide. And why he would go read such a book is beyond me. It's like, that sounds really stupid, but he went and read the book and he said he couldn't get out of this very negative state of mind. He just could not break that, that state of awareness of, of whatever he, I don't know what state he was in, but it was a very negative mind state. And so he saw my uh, card that I posted it on a, a bulletin board somewhere, and he pulled it off the board and he called me. He had bought a couple copies of uh, Shakuntala Modi, the psychiatrist Shakuntala Modi, who's also a hypnotherapist that does the attachment removals. He had, he had um, bought a couple copies of her book and read the read one of them, and he wanted me to read one of them and do the, her technique. So. He uh, he was kind of in a hurry, and he came to me without uh, me reading. Uh, let's see, how did it go? He bought me the book. He gave it to me, and he couldn't wait. He was like, I was like a quarter of the way through the book, and he just, let's do it. And uh, <laughs> I said, okay. So we had this session, and uh, there, we had no success in the first session, but there was success in the sense that, uh, I picked up that he really did have some attaching spirits and um, and it was very dark in the room and I couldn't, I was looking at the right side of his face and I couldn't see the left side of his face because it was so dark. And at that time I, I had this false notion that, you know, yeah, it needed to be dark in the room for them to relax, right? Well, that's not true. You can have lights blaring and it's just as good, you know? So anyway, uh, I couldn't see the left side of his face, and he said after after he came out of the first session, he said the left side of his face was doing all kinds of contortions. Hmm. He, I couldn't see it, so he paid me even though we didn't get 
much luck. We didn't get much um, success. We came back in the second session. He saw a um, like a, a Venus flytrap, or actually, that's not. I'm pushing the story. He saw a, um, a bl- in his mind's eye, with his eyes closed, he saw a, some type of energy form that was a blob that would um, was just morphing, changing shape, and, and and he could see it right. And then all of a sudden, he saw a Venus flytrap came right behind that blob and ate the blob, and then it disappeared. And, that was it. It was all done, and uh, I don't know where I don't what the Venus flytrap was. I don't know what the blob was. All I know was that uh, I kept up with the guy. He called me and kept up with me for two or three months after that. And he said at some point, uh, within two or three weeks of of, uh, or maybe it was even within a week. All I know, uh, for all I know, uh, he said he could. He started laughing and he couldn't stop laughing. And he just like laughed for like you know like for a very long time i don't remember how long it was days or hours or what but he said he laughed for the longest and couldn't stop and then he that negative mind state never came back so that's the one client i've had who uh, attaching spirits were taken care of i've tried four or five others that did not work and i've uh, only had the one abductee client i have never not worked with any others but i'm scheduled to work with some more abductees right so anyway go f- go for another question or well if- yeah i mean maybe let's finish off your original point about the uh chapter before i interrupted you like so the breeding the breeder for the grays i think you were going to kind of tie that up into why okay, that's well, the most sh- important chapter maybe or well um okay so she had uh, 24 implantation, implantations 24 checkups 24 removals 72 encounters 55 offspring and she, when she would get on board, they would Velcro her down. And I've heard people say, real aliens don't use Velcro because they can use your mind, their minds to hold you down. <laughs> well, that's true if they're focusing on you. But if they're off doing other things in the ship, they're not focusing on you. So Velcro is still applicable to real aliens. Well, so, maybe it was an MIB, no? Uh, I don't think so. Or not at my B, uh, my lab is what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think so. So anyway, she, um, so what happened was, uh, as I said, she could get out of her body, right? So she's strapped to this table with the Velcro. And so she would get out of her body and she would float around in her, uh, astral body around the ship and her causal body or whatever you want to call it, uh, mental body. I'm not sure what the proper term is for it. Um, and she would look for the for the aliens, and she would go in, go in the room where they're at, and she would check them out. She would jump in their heads, and she would look, and she would she would tell them like, look this way or look that way, and she would get them to do things that she wanted them to do. And of course, uh, you watch Star Trek, right? Well, yeah. Yep. Star Trek okay. is is the better of the two. My opinion. So you're familiar with the the Borg, right? Yes. Okay, so you know they have like this uh, mind state where they can all hear each other, right? The high. Well, the Greys, at least, right? The the gray the gray race that I'm talking about is the same way. So I can't speak for all Greys. You hear people talking about the Greys as if they're one race, and that's when I hear people, even even super knowledgeable people, talking about each of the different. Groups of aliens as if there there's one race of reptilians and one race of greys and one you know or two or three of each right and I'm like no there's probably like hundreds if not thousands if not tens of thousands of all of each of them and so anyway um, the point is that uh, they're in this hive mind thing so if one person the one being she's in his head or her head and it hears her thought and does what she tells it to do and then the, the, the others hear it also when she's they're in like, everyone's oh, head then i mean right she's only in one's head but they're all here they're all in the hive mind so they're all hearing it anyway so they all hear each other's thoughts right so they hear her thought in his in his or her the one being thought and hold on a second oh, my dog hold on a second <clears throat> so anyway the 
I let my dog out the door. He wants to run out. Yeah, even no I'm worries. Out. No I'm worries. Yeah. still here. Okay, so, yeah. uh, so the, you know, she might not be in the most powerful one's head, or she might be. You know, the, each one of them have different levels of of power, and she might have to jump out of his head or her head and jump in another one. And but the point I want to make to say it's important in the book is that she understands a lot of she comes to understand a lot of information about them which you don't hear very often okay like for instance uh, i'll give you an example the you hear a lot of people talking about the edge edges inside the craft there's no edges there's no points it's all rounded off right okay well the reason why that is is because they're like uh, this one gray race i'm not speaking for all the other ones but this one gray race has no nerve endings. They're like sharks. So if you were to cut one, let's say you stabbed him in the back, he wouldn't even feel it. You wouldn't. He wouldn't know he was stabbed, okay? Because he has no nerve endings. He can't feel pain. So, what one of the things she saw was that um, they were in this. They would be in this one room frequently, and they would be checking each other's bodies out for cuts, bruises, uh, punctures, anything piercing the body that's why it's round so you can't so you can't stub your toe on stuff no you it's so cut. you can't cut yourself yeah, yeah. Or, or puncture yourself accidentally yeah yeah oh. them they don't care about us <laughs> so that they don't uh you know one of the things she said was this you know you hear a lot of good things and you hear a lot of bad things about the grays they're mostly maligned but then there are other ones uh gray races that are not the ones that whitley was talking about what talks about but to hear good things about them, you know, and different ones, and you hear all the kinds of different things. And this one gray race that she was taken with, she says they look at us like cattle. And uh, and they fortunately don't eat cattle. <laughs> <laughs> fortunate, we're fortunate they don't eat cattle. So. We're fortunate that the anyway. gray grays are vegan. So. Well, let me put it one way. Uh, you know, the... I'm watching some YouTube videos, and they're talking about where this one race eats just about anything we do. But um, what this lady said was that that uh, I don't put it. I don't remember exactly what she said about what they eat. I think it's a tube that shoots something down their mouth. It's liquid. It's not you know solid, and uh, but. You know, you hear all different things about. I've heard different things about different races depending on who I've talked to and what I've heard, but it's a kind of all over the place. Aliens are not; um, they're like icing on a cake. They they make the cake taste sweet, but they're not really the most important thing in the world. I people like to talk about them. They they make good radio, but like humans. Um, okay, let me. How do I put this? All right, so. Um, there's a website. You guys are, are you guys surfing right at the moment? Surfing. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can surf whatever you need yeah. to. Okay, so um, scroll with, down. Are you, are you at my website? Are you at my website? I am, yep. Okay, so scroll down just a short ways uh, and look on the right side. You see where it says UFO TV, then UFO News, recent featured videos. I'm looking for the stuff in white. Then featured videos, then paranormal Alien abduction, alien implants, change, and then the universe. You see that? Well, I'm not at the front anymore. I got to get back somehow. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, this isn't going to work here. I'm in the wrong. It'll work. There we go. Just go to profilestates.com. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm there now. Yep. Okay. So, so on the right. Yeah. On the right. Yeah. Read, read the white text. Yep. And read it till you get down to the word the universe. Okay. White. Yep, got it. Okay, so underneath that, you see dark energy in the 4% universe? Yep. Okay, uh, do right-click on that and click on open link and new tab. Yep. Okay, got it. Oh, that's weird. And then uh, and what will happen is uh, a screen will come up on top of that, right? You see that X on the top, yep. right? Yep, yep. Click it. Okay. Okay. So now 
scroll down a tiny bit. So yeah, I'm in the, the book now. Yeah. Composition in the universe. Yeah. So you're you're in an educational site, okay? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm going to explain why aliens are not important. See, we think that aliens are important. They're not really that important. See that? Um, do you follow? Um, like, do you know who Sue Walker is? I've heard the name, but I don't really follow her. Do you know who Kevin Estrella is? Yes, we've had him on the show. Okay, so he, he talks about the Ponte, right? Okay. Okay, so the Ponte uh, talk about a uh, a contact with 32 races that's supposed to open contact that's supposed to happen in the fall of 2021, right? Okay, okay so I don't know if that's going to happen or not going to happen. I can't really speak to that, but um, Sue Walker is the person you want to have on your show. Okay. She is a uh, um, white otter and her are, are basically his contacts with the Ponte. Okay. And um, so anyway, um, the way attaching spirits or I should say the way disincarnate spirits and incarnate spirits relate to each other is sort of laid out on this pyramid. It's hard to f- see unless you really understand what's going on. So if you'll notice that all matter in the universe on this pyramid, ordinary matter is 4 to 5%, right? We live in they call, what they call a 4% universe. Okay. So if you, if you include every single uh, sentient being, every alien race in the entire universe, add them all up, it's, four per, it's like... Uh, 0.5%, less than half a percent of the universe. So including all the matter, all the electrons, neutrons, all that stuff is 4%, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, the next big one is cold matter. And the big one on the bottom is dark energy. Well, I've come up with this theory. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but it sounds like a logical theory. Nobody knows what dark energy is. What I believe dark energy, what that is, is subtle energy. So do you know what subtle energy is? Yep. Okay, so you know what chi is? Yep. In reference to Tai Chi, Qi Kong, yep. acupuncture, all that good stuff. Okay. All right. So if that's if dark energy and subtle energy and disincarnate forces, uh, spirits, ghosts, angels, demons, whatever, anything that doesn't have a body, that would fit into the dark energy piece. Okay. That's sixty to seventy percent. So if you take 4%, divide that into 70%, and you've got about 16 or 17 times. So for every alien, let's say there's a billion, trillion Google of alien races out there, right? So for every every one of those beings, you're going to have 17. Metaphysical beings. or Non-incarnate beings. Yeah, so it's almost like the physical beings versus metaphysical beings in a way, or spirits. Well, non-physical. Yeah. Okay, metaphysical, I don't know if that would be... That would be the definition, yeah. Well, metaphysics is a... It's a large topic, but... uh, I, I just don't know if all disincarnates fit into that. Right, yeah, yeah. No, that makes... That's interesting, though, yeah. But so... Uh, here, but here's how it ties in. It sounds like I just went off onto a tangent. I'm gonna loop it back. Okay, so when you, uh, two years from now, at the end of the fall of next year, we're supposed to have contact. But if you listen to Sue, she'll tell you that the Ponte are telling her that we're not gonna, even though we may have contact in the fall of 2021, we're not gonna get any help from these aliens. None until. We become a zero race, and most scientists here on Earth they call it a a, num- a one race. They yeah. say we're at a zero. We will need to become a one. That means you can get off the planet all by yourself. Yeah, and get energy we'll from the people. sun, and or yeah, well, energy, energy can, from the galaxy. I think they said. Well, you can leave from the planet without help from anybody else. Right. That's a class one. Well, the Ponte look at it as a class zero. When you when you get to the class zero. Then we will help you at that point. Aren't we well, there yet, though? I mean, no, we're not at a, a one or a zero. We're not at a one yet. All the scientists say we're at a zero. We're not at a one. Well, if, if the if Ponte's zero is equal to our one, no, we're not there yet. Okay, the Ponte look at it as um, as 
you've you can feed all of your beings on your planet. You're not killing each other. There's no wars. There's no crime. It, it's basically like a utopia. Right, right. You can, you can help yourself. Nobody's starving. Nobody's having any problems. Every it's kind of like a utopia. It's like the base level. So it's not that a that a, a small section of our secret societies can fly to other planets. It's because everybody needs to be taking care of themselves here first, and then can fly. Like so, it's not about our ability well, in a, in okay. a smaller okay, context, so, right? Like the secret space program or whatever. Right. So you have um, a, you got humans who can go to the stars already. Yeah. But according to the according to the aliens that she's talking to. It's not about whether we yeah. can get off the planet. It's whether we can get along with each other. Right, right. Yeah, that's the I, that's the goal, I guess. Eh? That's a way well, harder that's thing. That's why I got this like think sticker from Darren today. Be good to people. Well, if um, if we can get off the planet and we're exporting war to other places, yeah, yeah, uh, I don't think they're going to like that. Yeah, it's not a good. That's a problem. Uh, oh yeah, we're I'm, totally on a universal fucking taking over the place that'll be our thing yeah well it, you saw the movie uh the day there should stood still mm-hmm. mm, yeah well, right Bo- both the, of them Keanu, both of them Keanu Reeves? i think it was uh i think it was tom cruise i think no. anyways it's Keanu, i've seen Keanu, i've seen the Keanu, new one and the Keanu, old one Keanu Reeves is the uh star of uh the day there should still okay and uh Tom Cruise isn't in it, but anyway, go watch it. Basically, uh, all the races around the wor- around the Earth that that had inhabit this area decided we were not that important. Our our planet was, and we, they didn't want us to destroy the planet, so they destroyed us. Or they came very close, and at the last minute, uh, they decided maybe we can. They'll let us give us a f- another you know another year or two before they destroy us. If see if we can you know stop destroying the world but anyway so uh i just here's where the i haven't made the connection yet the connection is if we can't get to the part where we're getting along and we get up to that zero they're just going to say hello and leave and and you know and yeah but maybe they maybe would maybe their presence would help us get along i mean that's the thing right no, we're still fractured because people don't believe in aliens and any of that, they that's don't believe in that. They don't believe. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons. I it's mean, it's, we we're in a materialistic believe. society oh. where we're schizophrenic. Everybody the believes aliens could be materialists too, though. Well, no, Which they're would not be that, they're, like conquering the universe know, sort he, of thing, like the empire. I mean, look at this. This the, the seventeen mater- I think times the empire is materialistic. No, well, it's in not. Star Wars, it's, isn't well, it? Well, they have the Death Star. I think they, they, they have the Force. That's a Jedi. They have the Force. They have the dark side of the Force too. That's but not they still materialistic. Build a fucking I mean, Death Star. Go, go to my book. Read, read my book. I read did. Well, where can we buy it? Read, yeah. read <laughs> no, it's not read published yet. <laughs> 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 right this moment, read the title. <laughs> I'll read the title that I skipped over. I'm sorry, I did that. I, just, I got a little uh, overwhelmed by the the subtitle. How attaching spirits cause war, terrorism, crime, racism, murder, insanity, mental illness, molestation. Mur- Marital, marital discord, suicide, and many other illnesses, and are leading humanity till its fourth impending fall. So it's, we've fallen three okay, times. So you know fall. what? Okay. So, the war ahead. one's interesting because I was just uh, Russ was just telling me to get. Is it God's of Eden or war? Anyway, it's about how uh, the aliens are responsible for all the wars. Huh. I think Christopher Dunn. So, wrote it. so you're talking Maybe about. Not. I mean, there's a lot to to cover here. You're talking about um, this this next fall. I mean, if if this happened, right, these 32 races would come down and they would check us out. If we're not a zero yet, they're just going to leave. But you could make the well, case that so. them. You could make the case that them showing up would bring the planet together. Thus, let's the go con- by, go let's ahead. go back. Let's work our way backwards on, on this title. Okay, so fourth impending fall. Yeah. So let's go with that. All right, so currently is our present civilization, right? Before this, there was Atlantis, right? Supposedly. Yeah. Uh, it's just a rumor, right? Yeah, yeah. Lemuria before Atlantis. that. Before La- Atlantis, there was Lemuria. And then before Lemuria, there was, some people say there was five. 
I'm going to go with four at the moment, and you know, I haven't I haven't heard anything about the fifth one. The first one that I'm familiar with, which is very seldom ever talked about. In fact, I've never heard anybody besides myself talk about it, <laughs> and that is when we were dragons. So, oh, I like that. Uh, we the the myths that are in the shape shifting dragons, right? Right. Okay, so there was a guy that I met when I was learning metaphysics. He does alternative healing work, and he went to China with um, with some other with another person I know, and they met up with a whole bunch of people, and they got regressed back to a time when we were shape shifting dragons, and we shifted between. Uh, dragons and humans and we could fly around and that's where the myth the Chinese mythology of the dragons flying comes from comes from the truth but they just see it as a myth they don't know it's the way we really were so uh, after he had all all this experience with seeing this uh, during his regression and a whole bunch of other people did also as well he was driving around afterwards and noticing all these dragons Statues had balls in their claw. Every statue he saw had a ball in its claw. Mm -hmm. Well, the Chinese think, well, that's the earth or that represents whatever. They they have all these different ideas about what the ball represents. Well, that ball was the alien craft. That's the shape of the alien craft. So the aliens would come down in these balls, and they, when we were in human form, they would put a a force field around us, take us into their ships, and take away our power to shape shift. And that's how we lost that, that power. But basically, we would fly around and grab as a dragon, and we would grab the craft, and we would crush it with the aliens in it. And uh, so we were kind of at war with those guys, and uh, they took away our powers, and they won. And so I didn't believe the story when he first told it to me, but the deeper he got into it, and you you can you read somebody's body and their demeanor and how they're you know whether you think they're lying or not, and he didn't want to be associated with the story. He didn't want fame or fortune. He did not in any way want to be connected with this story. He just gave it to me as a gift. So having him act like that kind of gives me a little bit of credence to the story. So anyway, that's the past. Now let's go to the future. So um, let me see if I've got it. Hold on one second. I wonder second. if that fits in with that. Um, what was that? The couple that we had on, Darren? Um that does into Africa, Bruce Fenton and, and Bruce Fenton, Danielle, Daniela, and, Fenton, Daniela. And, yep. and what their, their theory was, um, 800,000 years ago, or was it 80,000 years ago where that, where the destruction happened? Like it might've been fall one that he's talking about. 80. Was it 80,000 years ago? Uh, or 800. I can't, I can't remember. I think it was 800 where the, uh, there was an impact with a uh, alien craft and it crash landed on earth and all that kind of stuff. I wonder if it was a similar, uh, it's where some of the tech tights come from, I think even the tech. Well, yeah. I can't remember if it was 80,000 or 800,000. 800,000. Eight, yeah. 800,000. So yeah. I wonder if that was fall one. Like I wonder if that corresponds with your dragon theory. Strange well, coincidences that happened around 800,000 years ago from the planetary changes, changes in our DNA, crash sites of tectites, and metaphysical and spiritual inner and outer stories of an ET war of sorts. Yeah, huh. Okay, so um, this the, world, the Earth's been around for like 2 billion years. So we've got history, or the Earth has history going way further than a million years ago. 4.3, uh, I think, right? It's like, uh, no, no, you're talking about the universe. I'm talking about the Earth. The Earth is, the universe uh, is like 15 billion or 14. Yeah, billion. well, they've, they've found stars that are... Allegedly. Like, I mean, that's like, pretty precarious in my opinion. But Well, they found stars that are like 700 million years older than the age of the universe. Yeah, I agree so with that. that. You know, there's like weird stuff out there. But anyway, Black there's a book... That theory. There's a book you can read called Mass Dreams of the Future, and it's um, you can Google it now if you'd like. But basically, um, this fellow uh, here it is, yeah, Mass Dreams of the Future by Chet Snow, PhD. Uh, so, oh, it's Future Earth. That's what it is. Hold on, Chet Snow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you on the left side of my website, if you go to my primary website, and on the left side, 
on the on the words on the left side, go down to the F's. You see where it says Future Earth? Yep. Click on that. Yep. Okay, so at the very top is the book, and you can click on that book. Oh, you're breaking up there. You're breaking up. So the, and, and his partner, another hypnotist. You're good now. Oh, you hmm. killed it. All right. Uh, I was downloading that website. That's what killed, killed me. Anyway, if you uh, check out that uh, book, you'll know that. Uh, Dreams Jets that can know, save your life? Is that the one? No, Mass Dreams of the Future. Yeah, okay. I got it right here. Okay. There's a PDF okay. of it. Okay. You can listen to it in your little voice stream. Okay, anyway, sorry to interrupt again. No, no problem. Uh, so, Chet Snow and his partner, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, but they took, they would go to, they would have um, hypnosis um, uh, group regressions with hundreds of people in a, in a single sitting, you know, a mass uh, regression. Mm -hmm. And they would do that every place they went for years, like 10 years. So thousands and thousands of people they took to past lives, future lives, and so forth. And a lot of what they did was future life stuff. And so they would um, take people to whatever in the future, wherever they landed. And after one of the parts of the uh, session was after they would bring people out, you would have to fill out a form. What year did you find yourself? What was going on in that year? And yeah. so forth and so on. And what what they come up came up with is that in the as a whole, thousands and thousands of hu humans saw the same future. Huh. And this is over time. Yeah. So it was consistent. That's a great they, idea. What they figured out was that uh, in the future. There's a lot less of us on this planet, maybe 1% of 1% of 1%. Wow. So we don't survive. We survive, but Barely. only as a fraction. Okay, so maybe we leave the planet and and a few of us survive, but I don't think that's how it works out because people are living in domes and half the planet is not very good condition. So How far ahead are um, they, do you think? Well, I, it's further than we're we're around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Southwest. but I mean, are you talking like a hundred or a thousand years? Well, it's different time frames. They're, yeah. they're going, they're going all all over the future. <clears throat> so you know, this isn't one thing. But the point I want to make here is that we're going down again, and even if you listen to Kevin Estrella, uh, he one thing he says if you listen to his interviews is that what the Ponte are telling him. Is that if any of those thirty-two races, if there if there's like a false flag attack that we create before they arrive, implicating one of those races yeah. falsely, yeah, they're just not going to show up at yeah. all. They're yeah. just going to say, "Oh, well, yeah. they don't want to. They don't want help." And then what will happen is the the earth changes that kill the most of us. They'll just let it happen, and they won't save any of us. Right. So. You know, the, uh, the, even if the world, I have a, um, a future that I want to occur that comes through me. And it's not like I'm like the Messiah or anything. It's just that I have what I want to occur. And if the world, if God or the world or whatever chooses to allow me to go down the path that I feel is the cr proper path, there's a possibility, I don't know how big of a chance it is, that we'll break out of this timeline. And what I see happening is, is that I'm sitting in a chair, and I could be up on a stage or maybe not, and I'm facing a crowd, they're sitting in their chairs, and uh, and there's a line of people uh, down the aisle, left side, and maybe there's one on the right, it really doesn't matter. But this line is snaking around and coming up to near me. There's a guy standing at the front of the line. He's got a watch in his hand. And when I say go, he lets the guy, the next person, walk from the head of the line to behind me. He walks up behind me. He gets within an, uh, an inch or two of the back of me. He closes his eyes, relaxes his body, relaxes his arms and hands and everything, and sticks his left arm out, straight out to the left side of my head. 
And then I grab his hand and I put his hand on my head. I have two attaching spirits, one that sits on my head, one that sits on my back. The one on my back is almost never never making itself um, known, but the one on my head is always there. And my, I put my wife's hand on there and she could feel it. She said it was the weirdest thing she'd ever felt in her life. But promptly after that, she stopped believing it even existed. But she, she felt it at one point. And so if she felt it, then other people can feel it too. And if we videotape this and enough and we do this with a crowd and after it's all over, everybody's sitting down and I'm, I'm standing up on stage and I go, all right, everybody who felt something on my head, raise your hand and we'll see who felt it. And then I'll say, how many of you who just raised their hand want to come up and explain what you felt? And then we'll have them go up to the mic and say, I felt or didn't feel or whatever, report what their findings were. And, uh, and all of that will be taped will be recorded and that'll be put out on YouTube and I'll do that over and over and over until at some point uh, sociologically humans say oh well maybe we should check this out and then I'll say well here's what we should do next and I'll give the next steps after that the next step after that is well do you do you understand how zero lux cameras can see spirits like that, uh, is it like that Kirlian photography type thing? No. No? Okay, so do you know what a zero lux camera is? Probably not, no. Okay, so a zero lux camera is, is, is no. like night vision. It's infrared. Okay. Okay, so it's a particular spectrum, and you can see spirits through that live, like as in live, as in real time. Okay, and so I'll give you an example. I was uh, I went to a ghost hunting convention in Skykomish, Washington. If you do do a pick pull up a map of Washington State, you'll find Snohomish easily. Yeah, but you may may have a hard time finding Skykomish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Skykomish is near Snohomish, but it's not the same town. Yeah, Skykomish is a ghost town, and uh, back in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s, there was a uh, an event where um, the the um, train going through this, uh, the snow tunnel on the, going through the side of this mountain caused an avalanche, and the avalanche wiped out the end of the tunnel and the town, the whole town, and a th maybe a third or half or two thirds of the people on the train survived, and a certain number of the people in the town survived. I don't know how many. But a lot of people in the town died, and a lot of people on that train died. And so, um, anyway, there was a girl that I was following around who was a paranormal researcher and also an alien researcher, and she had a zero, a Sony Zero Lux camera. It had just come on the market like literally seven days before. She bought like uh, the very first copy. She probably ordered it before it even hit the store. And so, uh, she was walking around with it, and I was standing behind her. And all 99% of the people I was with were women. I was the, literally the only guy in the whole crowd, right? And so I'm like falling in the ditch because it's so dark, right? There's no moon out. It's, uh, there's starlight, but that's it. And even though with your eyes focused, it's so dark. I was like falling all over the place. And this one girl let me borrow her third-generation night vision to wear for an hour or two. That was full fun but anyway uh i would be looking around and these women would go there's one and there's one and you know they'd be pointing all over the place they were all psychic and they could see the orbs the ghosts the humans that were in orb form flying around and i couldn't see squat and so but at some point one of these orbs that i couldn't see flew over me and her came down in front of us and it started flying in a figure eight formation now, in an, in an infinity sign, and bugs don't do that, and they're not big enough to show up on as a big dot on a uh, on a uh, film either in pitch dark. Okay, you wouldn't even see a, a bug at that you know wouldn't show up as a on the film. You wouldn't see it at all. Okay, even in zero lux. So, uh, so. <sighs> At some point after it was all over, she sent me a VHS copy of this 
tape that she made of all of her of the whole weekend. And I was working at Microsoft at the time. I started talking about ghosts to these people up at Microsoft, and they're like looking at me like I'm nuts. And you know, they're they're like don't believe in ghosts or demons or anything, right? So I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go get my video and prove it to you, right? So I went home and got my video, and I brought it up to Microsoft. I went upstairs, and there was a uh, 55, 60 inch flat screen TV there that was probably 10 or 20,000 or 50,000 dollars. One of the very first ones that were ever put out, and I had a VHS tape under it, and I stuck it in, uh, hit or hit the power, stuck it in, turned on the TV, and hit play. And we went through this videotape, right? And you could see the orbs flying past the screen. And those guys were going, oh, those are just bugs. Those are just bugs. So what I, I kept I fast-forwarding the tape and fast-forwarding it and rewinding. I looked through the whole tape backwards and forwards over and over. And you know what? I had watched this tape more than half a dozen times at home. And that where the, the uh, orb was flying in a figure-eight formation, I'd seen that more than half a dozen times. And when I went up to Microsoft, it was no longer on the tape. It had disappeared. The tape had never been edited. Hmm. So the mag- with magnetic media, if you record paranormal events with magnetic media, it's not unusual for, the, for those things to just disappear off the tape. Did you see it on the tape before as well? Or Yeah. Like I said, I watched the tape yeah, yeah. more than half a dozen times at my house. And then, wow. And I watched that section over and over and over because it was the only part of the tape that was worth watching. And uh, the rest just wasn't that interesting. And so I watched that one little segment over and over and over and over. And then by the time I took it up to Microsoft, it was gone. Tape yeah, never been edited. Interesting. So that's, uh, you know, that's an example of how you can see disincarnate forces, orbs, ghosts, uh, with current uh, technology. So what we do is we put out the next step after me doing the videos at a MUFON meeting or some other kind of meeting where I prove to people that I have a detaching spirit sitting in my head. After that, the second step is to um, have uh, put out, a, put out a, a contest for somebody who can take the infrared technology and take it to the next level to where it can not only see ghosts moving around, but it can also see attaching spirits attached to you. Yeah, yeah. Now, there is a guy who, who has static or video or video technology that he claims you can see that stuff i've looked at it and it's interesting and i'm not sure if that would qualify or not but i want something that can see it uh, very clearly and uh, but anyway um, our friend is saying that uh, that space dot on space.com they're they're using that technology you're talking about in a new telescope they're launching so I guess that's quite the popular, like zero lux is quite the popular thing for para, uh, for ghost hunting and alien hunting. So interesting. Yeah. Well, we need to take it to the next level. If yeah. You can, you can feel somebody has attaching spirit and then you can actually see it in yeah. real time. Yeah. And then the next step is to put out another contest. So that's like a $10 million contest for that one, you know. And then the next contest after that will be somebody who can teach a an exorcism methodology that every single person can do without failure. So if there's an exorcist out there who knows how to remove attaching spirits and they can teach their technique to anybody and it'll work every time, then that person has to prove it. And if they can prove it, they get like 10 million or whatever, you know? Yeah. That's the second contest. So once you have the technology that can see them and the techno- and the common knowledge of how to remove them, then after that, all the things listed in my title of my book will go away. War will go away. Terrorism will go away. Crime will go away. All these things are caused by these forces. These attached it, spirits. So I could, do some people call them the archons too? Is it the same thing? I mean, can you see them in the astral realm? Like if people, you know do these out of body things like you've even done all these Monroe Institute uh, group things where you try and go out of body. Can people see them in the astral realm a little easier? 
Well, yeah. I mean, people, the problem is you can't get, bring that to this realm. You can, okay, so I'll give you an example how the astral realm fits in with this. The There was a guy I was in jail with, okay, he, my, my uh, cellmate, he went to a psychic and the psychic told him at a certain age he would have access to great knowledge and power from previous lives that he had developed and uh, the time that that year that the psychic told him was the year you know the year that corresponded with a secret certain age when she said he would get that information was the year I met him I gave him access to that information in that in that cell and I took him back to various lifetimes he had um, an attaching spirit and he uh, he was as a kid he was on top of a slide and he instead of going down the slide he jumped off the slide but after by being influenced by his attaching spirit landed on another um object in the um, playground and this tore his body up and he went into a coma for uh so his body was slowed down of the metabolism so he would heal and survive and he did survive but um, anyway, I forgot why I brought him up. What, what were we talking about? You were talking about seeing uh, uh, attachments from the astral realm. Oh, the realm, astral, yeah. the astral yeah. realm. Yeah, okay. So um, he had been an exorcist uh, in a past life, and that's how he got his attaching spirit. He had um, come across a person who was possessed. He had them staked to the ground. He took salt, and he made a circle around them and did all the, the pentagram and all that stuff. and. He was exor- doing an exorcism on them, and he had a crystal ball, and he forced the through sheer will, he forced the demon out of a demon or demons. I think it was just one demon out of the person's body into this crystal ball. But when it came out of their body, it blew out their stomach. In other words, exploded their stomach out, and the entrails came out of the body and landed on the ground around the body. And that defiled the holy... When you make the circle with the salt and you sanct- you sanctify the inner circle so that a demon cannot get in to get you. And because the entrails that were blown out of the stomach when the demon came out of the person, it defiled that holy ground. And so the spirit, when it went into the crystal ball, had a lot of its power remaining so it it exploded the crystal ball and went into him and then when he died what happened is it went into the astral realm and he would go into the light and he would when he came back for his next body you go through the astral realm to get into your body and he would wait and when it went when he went through the astral realm it would attach to him before he got into his body right so he had that same attaching spirit for like four lifetimes wow and so uh, so yeah, the demons hang out in the astral realm, and a lot of other things hang out there. But uh, the astral realm is like basically it's composed of uh, memories of this world. If you hear of people getting out of their body, and they like go over to their buddy's house and and wake up their buddy and prove that they just got out of their body, that sort of thing. But yet when they're talking about pieces of their uh, out of body experience and some of those pieces don't match up with what's real, but yet it looked it seemed pretty real to them. Well, that means that they weren't on this realm; they were on the astral realm, which is composed of memories of this realm. So it's the same, but not quite. It's a, you know it's a little different. But uh, on that realm, you have uh, dolphin, you have grays, you have demons, you have okay. So let's go back since we're talking about astral beings. Uh, my client that we were just talking about who got out of her body and got into the heads of the grays, before she, she, the first time she ever encountered a gray, she was nine years of age, and she uh, and they gave her a hormone shot for her hormones to, to rapidly uh, move forward so that she could become pregnant at the age of nine, which is before when you're supposed to be pregnant. So, but before that first event at the age of nine with the grays, uh, she was attacked by what she called astral demons. 
Now, they're not demons like in the Bible, but they are demons in the sense that they look pretty hideous and they're they're of that nature, but they're not quite the same. So anyway, they come from the astral realm and they are extremely negative, right? So they just manifested in a room she was in and they started coming at her and a um, a barrier, an invisible barrier uh, was there between them and her. So they couldn't touch her. Well, the reason why they couldn't touch her it was because of this barrier, and the barrier existed. I have no doubt whatsoever that that barrier was put there by the Greys. Yeah. The Greys said, no, you're not going to, she's ours. Yeah. Not going to do this. So when you think of the Greys, they're not just another alien race sitting on another planet. They have a little bit more power than that. If they can stop beings from the astral realm of moving around on the earth, that says a lot about their power. Yeah. Okay, so that's... As that's an example of a astral being coming to the earth. Now I'm going to give you another one. Same, same scenario, same, similar scenario. Okay, I was in, um, I was in Virginia at a particular um, uh, one of the best parks in the state of Virginia. Virginia has the best state parks of almost of any state. Uh, I think Oregon's better, but anyway, um, they. This, we were at the, my wife and I were at this one park walking our dogs, and I was walking along, and I felt this extreme pain in the um, base segment of my pointing finger my on my left hand. It was actually um, yeah, right at the very base of it. And if you if you take your pointing finger, your hand, and stick it out in front of you and turn it to where it. It's basically you could slap you in the face with it and you're pointing to your right and you take your right hand and take your thumb and pointing finger and pinch the lowest part of your pointing finger it would, basically that's where it bit me right that at that point uh something bit me it was i was feeling pain right i could so i looked down at that point in my body and there was nothing there so without thinking I just took my right hand and I reached over and I squeezed the air just above my finger. And when I did that, what happened was blood appeared in the air. There wasn't an object. There wasn't a bug. There wasn't a creature. I just saw blood. And this blood was red and it existed for maybe two, three seconds at most. And then it disappeared. Hmm. And then... um, and I was like, it was a very sharp pain. It was very real. And I was like, what the heck was that? I had no idea what it was, right? Okay, so I went to a doctor. There was an Iranian doctor who has a clinic in Manassas. It's a twenty. It's a seven-day-a-week clinic. He's there seven days a week. He doesn't take a day off. And uh, you can go into his office and ring the bell and go in and see him with like less than five, you know, as long as it takes you to fill out the form, you're in. Right? There's nobody there, like on a Saturday or something, Sunday. There's nobody in there, right? And uh, and it was pretty cool, you know. So I went to this guy. And I looked him up on the web, found him, went to him. He was like a block away from where I lived. And I went to his place, and I went in and saw him and sat down, filled out the form, and got right in. And uh, gave him my insurance card. And he looked at my hand. My hand swelled up to like three times its normal size. And he looked at it, and I said, something bit me. Something invisible bit me. And he looked very closely. He took like a magnifying glass or something. And he looked very closely at my left pointing finger, the base of it. And he said, yeah, I can see two puncture wounds. Hmm. Okay. And I still have the, the, uh, I still have the doctor's, uh, you know, the, the paperwork they give you when you go to the doctor. I still have that. I have it scanned into my book. And uh, so I have proof that I went to the doctor that day. And uh, if you went talk to that guy today, he would tell you, yeah, Mike came to me and I saw puncture wounds in his finger. So, so how is that the other adva- How is that the other example of travel through the astral realm? So y- you were saying. No, 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 stop. So what that was is I told you about the lady, the yeah. abductee. Yeah. Okay. She had astral demon demons manifest on earth. Yeah. To try to attack her. Well, I had an astral, what I think was an astral bug, bite my finger. Huh. 
So that's an astral. And did you? Being. So did you? Did you kill it by? Did your chi travel into the astral realm to kill it? No, no, I just as you pinched it. it? Pin- yeah, but it, you didn't I feel it. it wasn't in this physical realm, though. So, well, it was. Okay, so I'm going to give you another one. Since you want to know about astral beings manifesting on Earth, that's two. One was the astral demons from the girl that that I worked with, the abductee, and then one was that one. Okay, the next astral uh, being manifesting on Earth that you know of is the Skinwalker Ranch, Mm -hmm. the wolf. The wolf that, that they shot at and it didn't hurt the wolf, that's an astral being manifesting on Earth. What they are is... The, the Indians think they're uh, people who are Indians who were plastic, uh, practicing black magic who are cursed to walk the earth forever. Well, that's not exactly correct. They're cursed to walk the astral plane forever. Right. And, or for, it's not forever. There's nothing forever. They're cursed to walk the astral plane until they decide to change their ways. And the astral plane has access to the physical plane. Right. Or the earth plane. So as the wolf, they can go from the astral plane to manifest as the wolf, and they can go back, and they can they probably manifest as other things besides the wolf. That's just how they choose to manifest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so I, okay, so I gotta. That's good. The, that answers those questions. So you've got an attachment. You still got an attachment, which came from a, two of them. a marijuana two of them. addiction that you figure. Right. So with the, with this uh, <clears throat> with this real increase in interest in all the different psychedelics like, you know, psilocybin, ibogaine, MDMA, peyote, mescaline, salvia, ayahuasca. You tried ayahuasca as well. I mean, is this, is this, um, how do you explain the entities? Well, how do you explain the entities that people encounter during these psychedelic experiences? Like, are they also attaching spirits, let's say? And, and, you know, and. Okay. So uh, first of all, I can, I've never done the, the smoke to DMT. So I've never encountered the the the, the, ba- the the bouncing basketballs that go in your chest and all that. I've never encountered those. So I I should not falsely speak of every realm or all the things. No, no, no. But just it just it, it's not like well, hold on, you, hold you on, can just speculate. Finish, I mean, that's fine. Hold on, hold on. I've got it. Hold on. So here, but okay. So I'll give you what I experienced with I with ayahuasca, the DMT, right? Okay. Okay. So. Every person's experience is different. But if you, before I took the ayahuasca, I went out and read everything I could find on it and without buying a book. And I watched every video I could come across on YouTube. Okay. So I, I got pretty knowledgeable about, about it from that level without having done it before I did it. Right. And the, what sticks in my mind about those experiences that people talk about. There's one thing that is the most common experience with ayahuasca. Do you know what it is? Uh, mother ayahuasca? Yes. Huh. What? No, no, that's, that's, <laughs> no, no that, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. Mother ayahuasca. The dragon? A, the dragon? The reptile? It's, it's the, a, is that... it's, it manifests as a snake. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A yeah. serpent. Yeah, the serpent. Yeah, that's, right, that's serpent, what, right. is that, so am I, so, I'm right. That's no, the mother that's ayahuasca. Not, that's no, not, not what not, I'm oh. talking about. Most common experience is hell. Oh. Okay. Go watch the videos. Go read the okay. things. Yeah. You'll find that an experience of hell is the most common ex- common experience. So that's what I experienced too. I also experienced hell. Okay. So when I say hell, okay. So first of all, let's take LSD. LSD is slightly more visual than ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is not a visual hallucinogen it's a physical it's a energetic hallucinogen okay you don't start the vast majority of people who have uh, ayahuasca experiences at the beginning of their like 5 10 15 20 times the the first the starting out people like me they don't see anything but they still experience something and it's on an energetic level but it's just as real and that is or more real, they say. Well, okay, so yeah, it is very real. But um, I'll give you an example of one of the things I went through with ayahuasca. So, um, besides the throwing up, and uh, 
at some point you might want to defecate um, defecate also so it comes out stuff comes out both ends right so i got up and i went to go take a dump right and the the uh, toilet is in a little thatched hut a tiny thatched building the size of a much slightly bigger than the toilet itself outside the back of this thatched hut i'm in right so I'm walking towards that door to get outside as quickly as possible to get to the toilet before I take a dump. And I don't hold it. I, I crap right in my pants, right? And um, so I keep going and I get out there and take get in the restroom, take off my pants, dip them in the water and, and all that stuff and take care of the business, right? But while I'm walking, I'm halfway to the door. And my world ends, it stops. It goes black. And I don't fall down and unconscious. I'm still walking, but I'm not there. You know, I'm not I'm not conscious. I'm gone. Right. So who is walking if it's not me? So I can give you two or three different stories of people I've known or heard of who, like I'll give an example. There was a guy uh, I knew who was in a worship service and he would tell We'd sit around circles, talking circles, and he would talk, well, I'm a genius. I really am a genius. I work for all these alphabet agencies. And one of the things the guy mentioned was uh, every once in a while, like once every five or ten years, I'll go psychotic, right? And I said to him, well, what happens when you go psychotic? And he goes, well, I try to kill myself. And I said, how do you do that? And he said, I try to strangle myself. And you have to think, when, you, when somebody's psychotic, they're not present in their body. They're gone. They're unconscious. But their body is still animated. So you have to ask yourself, what is animating his body to cause him to try to strangle himself while well, he's not even in his body? Okay. So there's another another one, a similar one, where I was watching TV and there was a videotape, play, a video recording playing this this reporter. She's interviewing a uh, somebody who was just convicted of, of uh, child uh, rape raping a child he this guy took a young girl or a young boy into a stall in an airport and raped them in the stall and he's and she's you know listen uh talking to this uh convicted rapist who is about to go away for however many years and she says you know what tell us what happened and the guy says well i remember walking into the restroom with the child I remember walking into the stall with the child, but when we had sex, and he knows he's not um, not denying he had sex, he said, I wasn't there. Right. Now, he wasn't trying to say I was insane or anything like that. He was just saying he wasn't present in his body when the act of rape occurred. So you have to ask yourself, who raped the child if the person raping them is not even present in his body? So, or you could say, well, the guy's lying. He's trying to make up this or that to get off later on. He didn't see, he didn't come off like he was going down that road. He was kind of owning up to what he did. You know, he said, I remember this and I remember this and he, he's owning up to it. He just said, I wasn't there when the rape occurred. So, you know, and I could go on and on, but the point is, is that, uh, you have to wonder what animates people when they're not in their body. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my attaching spirit that sits in my head, it pretty much took me over during the ayahuasca session. And I was still present all that time, but uh, it was like causing me to, you know, move my jaw a certain way. It was like it was like a like a uh, pilot that got it just got in the craft and he's checking all the bells and whistles out seeing if everything's functioning you know, it was uh it was very scary it was the scariest experience of my life and i've i've had some you know you t- have you ever seen a miracle uh well it's a, that's pretty subjective but i mean I, yeah we've had some pretty deep synchronicities with the show, I mean, well, I consider some of those talk, to be possibly miracles. I don't know. You're talking to one right now. Hmm. I am a miracle. Let me give you an example of how I'm a miracle. Okay, I was one of my three best friends. I was driving down 
uh, on a motorcycle going down uh, to Freeport from Houston. And uh, I had this guy pull up beside me on his Kawasaki 550, and I was on a Yamaha Virago or Yamaha um, 750. Um, and uh, we raced all the way down to Freeport, and then when we got down there, we uh, stopped on the beach, and it was about eight of us, and we finished off a keg between about eight people, which is a lot of beer per person. And then we got back on our motorcycles, and we were racing again, and we jumped. We got up on the uh, the levee road at Freeport, and this road is like uh, 30, 40, 50, 60 foot off the ground. And uh, it, we're up on the top of this thing, just hauling ass. And uh, excuse my French, but we get neither one of us has, have ever driven on this road before. It's the most important thing about racing, if you're going to do illegal things, which I used to do a lot of that stuff, is you make sure you're on a road that you've ridden before at least one time. If you haven't ridden on that road one one time before, do not race on it. Okay, you make sure you know your route before you do the illegal stuff. So anyway, um, we get down to the end of this first turn and we're going into this turn. This is an indie style turn, right? And uh, I'm cranked over so far that my tires are way above my head, okay? And um, it, if you remember any 500, those, those turns, it was like those turns. So I could lean over where my, the whole, bi- the whole bike and me, we're, we're further down than the tires that are touching the road, that are way up, right? And we get three quarters of the way through this turn, and all of a sudden the radius of the turn goes inward radically. And uh, he he's ahead of me because he's on a smaller bike, so he can turn faster. And so uh, he's he's got a full set of leathers on, and and his case guards start scraping on the ground, and his tires come off the ground. His his bike's just spinning in circles, and he's like getting road rash, but he's not getting road rash because he's got leathers on. Lucky him, right? I don't have leathers on, but uh, when that radius decreased radically. It flipped my bike up to where it was perpendicular to the surface of the road. And it starts slowly drifting up the edge of the road to where I'm literally driving on the edge of the road, on the top, the very, very edge, right? And uh, and then my consciousness goes, just stops. It's like my world ends at that. that my, my memory doesn't go past that, that where I'm on the edge up there. But when the cop got there, what he did was he figured out where he must have looked at the tire markings on the road and he he measured somehow, I don't know how he did it, but he measured from the point where I, I went off to the point where the bike hit, they had landed on the top on its gas tank upside down on the ground. I didn't have a helmet on. Okay. I flew through the air like a long ways and hit the ground with the top of my head with no helmet on. Right. And he measured like the the cop measured from the point I went off to the point where it hit the ground, and he started doing calculating. And I don't I've never met a cop that was quite this smart, but this cop was was pretty smart. He he could calculate the distance, and figured out that I must be going seventy five to eighty miles an hour, and wrote me a ticket for that speed. I'm like unconscious, dying, and he's writing me a ticket, right? Oh my God. So, uh, and he's like trying to wake me up, right? And all I see is this, it's, uh, I, I come to, and all I see is the whole world is like clouds. It's all gray. And I see this, um, it's like a bear. And uh, this dark uh, humanoid thing that's bigger than me is coming at me, and I'm pushing it away, right? That was the cop. Of course, I didn't know that. All I'm seeing is a dark figure in clouds. and uh, And then... Three days later, I wake up out of the coma, right? So uh, the whole top of my head turned soft like a baby's head from the impact, and I should have died, but it wasn't my time. Hmm. So I consider myself a miracle to be alive. Yeah. Wow. Uh, We're glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you. I got a, I just want to, I got a no quick question. No more motorcycle uh, racing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have. I gave up motorcycles. So yeah. Long. yeah. 
Just a quick question about the psychedelics and and also your you know your pot smoking because you gain these attachments oh, as oh, well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, but oh, before you ask that question, one last thing. I didn't do the circle the ayahuasca. Okay, the circle of, of answering your question about the about the psychedelics. Okay, it opened me up like a can opener, where I was like a psychic for two years, and I could see people's, I could see attaching, I couldn't. Well, I could see people's symptoms that gave me the understanding that they had attaching spirits. And I actually saw one attaching spirit that scared the crap out of me. And so I was like a super psychic, but it was all from, it was, my consciousness was expanding downward, not, not like a, like an expanding circle. It was, it was like somebody changed my frequency to where it was like a few degrees more dark uh, from a, you know, dark as in, negative more negative yeah, yeah where you where you're seeing the negative things well the the catch is the negative things can see you too ah. that's it so it changes you to where you can see them more but it also changes you to where they can see you better also and so they start coming at you and the way that manifests is like um like my my wife and i would be laying in bed half asleep and the dogs would be laying there and all of a sudden like it would sound like a hand grenade would go off in the living room. Something equivalent in in uh, in, in volume would happen, like this explosion would happen in the middle of the living room, right? So the dogs would jump up and start barking their heads off because it's not something inside my head that's occurring. This is something in the real world that's occurring, right? And so I go in the living room and there's nothing in the living room. Huh. There's no, there's nobody doing anything. There's not somebody on the on the floor down, hidden the floor with a broom. There's nothing weird going on in the living room. What in the world would make such a noise? Well, all kinds of things like that were happening during two years after me doing the ayahuasca. It huh. opens you up psychically. Yeah. And you're uh, going to see the things that are around, things that you might not want to see. And there was a point where I could see, uh, I don't know if this was during those two years or not, but it might have been. I got to where I could see my own attaching spirit. Okay, floating above me, it was like a uh, smoke, like black smoke. It scared the crap out of me. I stopped. I shut that down. I, I somehow, I part of me wanted to be able to see that, and then I got and I, once I did see, it, I was like, no, I don't want to see that. Right. Shut it off. Right. So, what was your question? Well, it was just whether you had access to the astral realm through psychedelics, or or even if you're in psychosis from like heavy drug use or something, and you see these hallucinations of demons or whatever is that is that, are you opening up sort of gateway there to, at for maybe attachments or for like you know instead of it being a hallucination that you're actually opening up a well you know okay, access so or a portal or something you're, you're, no what's happening is you're changing your frequency of who you are to a frequency that is more negative and so you're you're more at that level of the darkness so you can see those things better and they can see you better but I'm going to give you an example of, of how I've seen this in the real world beyond me. I mean, I could go all day on my experiences, but here's one that I've seen more recently. There was a, uh, you ever watch live PD? No. Okay. So I like live PD. It's, it's pretty interesting. So anyway, uh, there was an episode of live PD where they, this lady was running in and out of traffic and they, they got her surrounded and one of them would go moving at her and she would just like scream her head off anytime uh, any cop or anybody would even like move a foot or two in her direction from quite a ways away. She'd be looking at them and she would just like go off screaming bloody murder when they would move just a few feet in her direction. So she was seeing part of that person that is not their regular body. Now, when I was, when I was seeing people having done the ayahuasca, what I would see is um, their, I would see their eyes moving around in their head really, really fast. And of course, their eyes are not really moving around fast like that in their head. Their physical eyes are doing nothing different, but their astral body or their causal body or their mental body or their etheric body, some other body of them was doing that. But to me, it looked like it was their physical body moving around. I couldn't tell the difference between what I was seeing and anything else. Mm. It wasn't like a aura around them or anything. It was just them. Okay. But I knew it wasn't 
their physical body for some for whatever reason. And intuitively, I knew that. But those people would be doing that, and the person right next to them would be totally normal, right? So uh, I was sitting in a um, in a courtroom um, outside, uh, not in a courtroom itself, but in a courthouse outside the courtroom in the hallway in the bench, and uh, this is one of the times where I saw this occurring, and I could see that maybe one out of three or one out of four people were their eyes were doing that, and the rest of the people were totally normal, and I knew in, intuitively that the persons whose eyes was moving around like that were the ones that had been uh, accused of doing a crime. They were the person like me who was accused of doing a crime. They were the ones going in to see the judge, and huh. the other people were the, the relatives who did not have attaching spirits. Huh. So I've been in situations where during those two years where I'd be walking on the street, and literally every person on the street had their eyes doing that. So everyone had their had attaching spirits. Hmm. And my theory is that pretty much every person on the planet has two or more attaching spirits, almost without exception. And uh, the way I look at it, I'd, I'm going to give you something that's totally made up, but it's 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 just for just for demonstration purposes. Okay, I look at like a third of the people who had the problem in the past, a third of the people who have the problem now, and a third of the people who have the problem in the future. So that's one third plus one third plus one third is three thirds. Three and it goes into three one time. So that one is equivalent to one hundred percent. So that's everybody, just not all at the same time, right? right. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got the problem. They either have the had the problem, have the problem, or will have the problem. Okay. And so, uh, but that's where the fall comes. The war. Uh, there's a quote from you know I could go through each of the symptoms listed the title of my book and give you information which kind of gives you an idea that yes this like say war like i'll give you war for an as an example okay um there's a quote that you can get of you ever watched the dead files no no we don't have tvs okay so the dead files is a tv show um and uh, you could probably get it through um, uh, through a uh, an a, a uh, Amazon Android or something device. like that. Yeah. Well, no, through an, you get get yourself an Amazon Fire Stick and load load a load a one of the applications on there. You can get any TV series ever made. Anyway, um, so um, if you watch it, there's an episode where um, they're talking about the Indian Wars. And that it, it was, I, I don't remember what state they were in. I don't know if it was Texas or New Mexico, but they were in one of the s- southern states. And they were the the uh, the reading that she was giving to the people living in this house was about the Indians that lived pr- in that area in the same place that the house was prior to them for hundreds of years. And and I don't have the quote available to me available to me right this moment, but basically it comes down to well, this these Indians lived for 100 or 200 years, and then these Indians took their place for another 100 or 200 years, and then these Indians took their place for, you know, and these wars that occurred between these different uh, groups of Indians occurred because the Indians were influenced to have war with each other. So that influence from the disincarnate forces is still in place today. It's right. not just happening. No, it's it getting worse probably. Or, yeah, yeah. Well, not necessarily, because actually, to be honest, if you if you look at it historically, there's less war now than there's ever been on the earth. It we understand. Yeah, but we're we're ready for a new one. I mean, only how many years ago before World War Two? So, or you know, it's well, we're not always, too far away from a, a world war in the past, is what I'm getting at. If you look at well, there's you know, always there's always war going on somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying the number of wars and yeah. the volume yeah. of war. And, yeah. Right now, yeah. And, yeah. Less and less. Yeah. Hopefully but, it goes down to zero. Well, I've told you how we can get there. That's yeah. right. You guys got to zero. We want to get to zero. You guys got to guys got to rent a video camera and get a crowd together and we'll we'll get together and they come to Atlanta with a video camera and a bunch of buddies and we'll go down and rent a 
you know, so you guys can pay for a room to rent and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have that uh, event that I was talking about and everybody will come up and put their hand on the back of my head and see if and they can maybe, feel that attachment. Maybe, maybe some of those people will go running off the stage too. <laughs> and, uh, oh my God, what was that? I'm getting out of here. You know, who knows they could freak out. But, uh, anyway, um, so you're trying to publish your book. You want to, you want an agent for your book still, or do you, did you think about publishing it yourself? No, I'm not going to publish it no? myself. No, I'm going to no, you... either take you, I'm going to take you with me or I'm going to have an agent. Really? Eh? Well, okay. I did forward it to our buddies over at inner tradition. So they're taking yeah. a look at it. So yeah. maybe it'll end up over there and then we'll get a free copy of it. Because if you get an just, agent, I'll get you multi, I'll get you, both of you can have a free copy. Excellent. I'll do my best. Right maybe on. I'll be your agent. Um, well, we do do events too. So, I mean, maybe we will come and do the head touching event one day. <laughs> well, the, 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 the library that, um, I, I go to MUFON meetings, uh, quarterly and it's at, um, what they consider the South side of Atlanta, but it's not really the South side of Atlanta. It's the South side of from where we live, but it's still north of Atlanta. And, um, and they, there's a room that MUFON rents that's $35 for, I think it's like four hours. And um, it's a pretty big room. It'll hold like, um, I would think 50 to 150, maybe almost 200 people. And, uh, uh, $35 isn't much money. Yeah. And this is a way to get maybe some evidence for these attachments. That's what you're figuring. Well, it's not just evidence. There's evidence all over the place, but what I'm talking about is evidence enough to where, yeah. uh, where people go, you know, start thinking, well, maybe he's right. Maybe this is real. Yeah. You know, I can talk about it all day and I yeah. can give examples. Like I'll give you one more, um, and then did we go. And listen? then we got to wrap it up. Okay. So, did you guys listen to Art Bell back in the day? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you may have actually heard like this. early nineties. Do you remember when the girl called and told him where his watch was at, where he lost when he lost his watch? I don't. I can't say. No. Okay. So, this girl he at he said, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that are psychic. I want you guys to. Um, when you psychics to call in and tell me where I lost my, where's my watch. And, uh, and this girl called in and told him where his watch was. I wasn't listening that night, but, uh, you know, two, three, four, five, six weeks later, she called in again and I was listening live and she goes, uh, I'm so-and-so. Do you remember me? And he goes, no, who are you? And, and she says, well, do you remember you lost your watch? And he asked for somebody to find it for you. I'm the one who found it for you. I told you, you're up on the roof. You got sweaty, and you came down, and you put it in your drawer, and there it is in your drawer. And he looked in his drawer, and there it was. So, I'm the one who did that. Do you remember me now? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, I remember you. And, uh, and he goes, well, What's up? What do you got? What, what do you got for the folks? And she, she goes, Well, my information I'm getting psychically is that the this was within a few weeks of the Columbine event, okay, and uh, or within a month or two of the Columbine event. And she goes, I'm getting what I'm getting psychically is that these school shootings are caused by um, disincarnate or I don't remember. She said paranormal forces, dark forces. I think she called them dark forces. Well, the school shootings are a form of terrorism. OK, that's we think of terrorists as being Middle Eastern or Muslim. No, the school shooters are just as much terrorists as the as the uh, anybody else. and so. Uh, the disincarnate forces were ca are causing those school shootings, just like they're causing all terrorism and all war and, and the war with the Indians and on and on. And I could give you, I could go on and on and give you examples of how they cause tons of things. Like speeding is the most common uh, uh, symptom of attaching spirits. And how many people speed? Well, 99% of the people speed. Believe it or not, they are. Uh, they're uh, caused by these same forces. And huh. I could give them those too, but I know you want to wrap it up. I yeah, we gotta, yeah, we got to get another, uh, we got our big episode tonight for number 400. So. All righty. Well, yeah. Uh, well, thanks. So uh, we'll have links to your website and all that. And um, we'll keep in touch about your book. Hopefully you can find an agent and get that thing published. So you don't have to 
Like you said, take it with you. <laughs> if you're going to take well, it with you, can I have it first? <laughs> also, you should check out The Gods of Eden by William Bramley. I think uh, you might find some stuff in there you like. Well, the Gods of Eden. Yeah, I've read it. It's um, <laughs> there you go. I've, I've read a lot of the, a lot of. Yeah, I've been around a long time. Gods of Eden. Gods of Eden. What, isn't it? Gods of Eden. The Gods of Eden. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, thrilling the truth yeah, that... about extraterrestrial infiltration and the conspiracy to keep humankind in change, chains, which is mostly through warfare. I think I've read it. I'm pretty sure I have. But um... I'll email you the link anyway. You can check it out, see if you did. But we would like to have you back sometime, maybe after the book is published. Sure, we'll do that. And maybe we will do an event. I mean, yeah. we do have we have a ton got of some friends in Atlanta, in Atlanta. So yeah, maybe there's lots of excuses to want to go to Atlanta for sure. Definitely got a bunch more questions for you. So, no. well, uh, maybe we can. You know, if you come to Atlanta, maybe we can make history and do that. Uh, yeah, that attaching spirit thing. All Making right. history is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it is if you change history. If you, yeah. If you can, I, ask me in the future. Ask me how I saw the future and didn't change it, and I saw the future again and changed it. So I got, Absolutely. I got That's two, a good cliffhanger for part two. All right. Thank All right, you, you very much, it? Mike, for coming on the show. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I look forward to getting a link from you guys when you post it on YouTube or wherever you post it. Yeah, right on, Absolutely. buddy. Absolutely. Have a lovely night, and we'll see you next time. You Take too. Care. Thank Take you very much. Mike. Have a good one. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was our chat with Mike Beaver. That was chat with Mike, Charles Mike Beaver, Mike Charles Mike Beaver, Beaver. Mike, Mike Beaver. Beaver. Of course, I did send his uh, proposal over to our buddy John Hayes at Inner Traditions. He did like it. and uh, The first 50 on. pages was good. I mean, He sent it I'd, on to the uh, acquisitions see, department to see. See, he wants the big prize for that book. And I, I would say that there's a risk going through an agent and an ed- you know, they're going to want to edit it. They're going to want to take some stuff out of it. Make it their own, you know. This is what they do. That's so right. Like I, maybe we should, you know, maybe he should just publish it on his own. But self-publish yeah, it, you I do end up with it. more of a take that way yeah. if it is. But uh, you just don't get the same marketing potential and all that. I think, and or like an upfront, you know, could be that hundred k. I think he wants an agent to get a bit of a, you know, bit of a bonus there. Absolutely. So big thanks to Mike for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys. Uh, for making it possible, do check out grimerica.ca slash support so you can help us uh, keep paying the bills, keep the lights on, keep the stream going, keep all the shit that needs to keep going, keep going so that we can keep doing the show, keep Graham fed. And uh, yeah, we love you for it. We couldn't do the show without it. Grimerica.ca slash support. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff in the show notes you can do that doesn't cost a dime. You can... Review the show, share the show, sign people up for the newsletter. Email Graham at GrahamAmerica.com. Spam Graham. Yeah. All that fun Instagram stuff. Instagram Graham. Instagram Graham. You can check me out on the Twitter, like the Facebook page, all that fantastic stuff. Doesn't cost you a dime. We love you for it. It's all in the show notes too. So you just like check out the show notes, click all those links. Within five minutes, you could have fully supported the show in every capacity. Anyway, we'll let you get to that over the weekend. With some good vibes. Have some good vibes for your weekend. We love you. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. I'm walking gingerly through the rat race. Take a look at the big old smile on my face. Kicking around down by the pool of narcissists. The people are many, they preen themselves, oh how they navel gaze. Somewhere over that hill, the gloomy skies cease to exist. I'm climbing that hill, I pass by and pity the poor Sisyphus. I go into hyperdrive, turn into a beam of light. I'm strolling down a static electric avenue. The people are predictable, they say, good morning, how do you do? When out of nowhere, a randomly pure angel in the crosswalk bumps into me. And in doing so, knocks all the evil and all the wind out of me. 
it's black as tar, ugly as ever, and of no apology. This angelic mama sings heavenly of the truest theology. Together we're a seraphim dream, forever young with no chronology. A thousand years from now we'll be written into ancient mythology. We go into hyperdrive and turn into a beam of light. Can you tell me about the view up there? It's sparkling remarkably, the air is crystal clear. Well, please won't you tell me what it takes to transcend this place? A little bit of heart and a whole lot of soul. Take a look at the big old smile on my face. As my angel says, dance with me and your life will never, ever, ever be told. I go into hyperdrive, turn into a beam of light. 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 Turn into a beam of light.